Andy Fulamina gave us great. She fed us up with spuds and green cabbage every day. I'll never forget the green cabbage. Do you know who'd love it down here today? Who would love it down? Me. Lady Lady Gaga. Oh, God, I might. If I had my donkey down there, I could be doing the donkey rides on the beach. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Good luck getting insurance for that, Lee. <laughs> I will play that one by ear. Good luck to you. Have a great day. <laughs> All right, take care of yourself. Thanks very much indeed, Lee. It is, of course, the 9 till noon show, and it's business as usual for this uh, Monday morning, but there is a hook. We are broadcasting live from beautiful Rathmullen. If you want to watch today's show, we'll tell you how, but we want you listening, getting involved, all that information on the way, but it is time for a news update, and I don't know who's doing news this morning. Um... Uh, Daniel Brennan. Daniel's with us. All right, Daniel, sorry about that. A very good morning to you. Good morning, Greg. An old deputy says that if fish processors, is, fish processors in Killy Beggs are having to contact and Norwegian trawlers to receive fish caught in local waters. Sinn Féin's marine spokesperson, Potter McLaughlin, took to social media over the weekend, claiming that many Irish fishing boats are tied up at the docks due to EU policy and spiralling fuel costs, while other European countries can claim local fish instead. Deputy McLaughlin says a lot more must be done to help local processors in Killy Beggs. The government is reportedly not going ahead with a review of evidence given by mother and baby home survivors. Today's Irish Examiner reports that the pr- promised independent review, which was outlined in June of last year by Children's Minister Roderick O'Gorman, will now not happen. The review had been promised after it was found that a prior inquiry did not give proper weight to the 500 witness testimonies of mother and baby home survivors. Robert Troy's vacant junior ministerial role is likely to be filled this week. Senior figures in Fianna Fáil expect new appointment will be, will be approved by Cabinet on Wednesday during its first meeting back since the summer break. One of those being earmarked for the job is Dara Kaliri, who lost the role of Agriculture Minister in 2020 during the Gulfgate controversy. But today's Irish Times reports that no final decision on the post has yet been made. The government has been content called on called on to continue the maintenance of school libraries. In a pre-budget submission, Children's Books Ireland has called for the one-off payment of €20 million Euro made in last year's budget to be continued. CEO of the organisation, Elena Ryan, says the payment equates to just over €20 Euro per child in school and that schools need the ability to be responsive to children's educational needs. Schools need to be able to respond to children's interests if we're going to keep them interested in reading. We can't keep telling them not to be looking at screens and then not providing them with brilliant, relevant, fresh books that have children that look like them and their classmates in them. So while 20 million might look like a big spend on paper, 21 euro a head each year for every child in the country is not too much to ask. And finally, public sector pay talks resume at the Workplace Relations Commission today after falling apart earlier in the summer. At that stage, unions rejected a 5% wage hike, saying it would not combat the extra food, fuel and housing prices caused by the cost of living crisis. The government has indicated it's prepared to increase its wage offer in order to avoid a series of potential strikes by the likes of teachers and nurses. And that's all from the news desk for now. I'll have a full news update at 10 o'clock. But until then, good morning. In your 20s, you hit a fork in the road. One way is predictable, the office job, the salon. The other is the road less traveled with the Irish Army, where after basic training, you can qualify in a trade, learn computer skills, serve overseas, learn the life skills any employer will look for when you move on. If that's the road for you, the Irish Army is recruiting young men and women right now. So visit military.ie and be more in the Irish Defence Forces. And now it's time for the talk of the Northwest, the nine to noon show with Greg Hughes on Highland Radio. And a very good morning. You are very welcome along to the nine to noon show for this uh, Monday morning. It is the start of another week and it is Monday, the 29th of August at four minutes past nine. How are you keeping? I do hope you're well and we look forward to having your company here for the next three hours on this show and throughout the day here on your number one. Highland Radio. We are broadcasting live from beautiful Rathmullen this Monday morning and it's already got a nice little buzz about it. Loads of uh, tourists about. I'm not sure how many of them have made their way out of their accommodation yet, but already some people uh, milling around the place. If you are down around Rathmullen uh, over the course of the next three hours, feel free to come and say hi. We've got uh, a regular show uh, with you, but we will have uh, for you, sorry, but we will have a focus on uh, Rathmullen a little later on in the show. Katie McAteer who uh, did us all proud at the Rose of Tree. She'll be joining us in studio a little later on. 
We've got some live music from Carol Wilson, and we're going to be speaking to people who uh, swim in the mornings around here and those who enjoy the, the water through its sailing club. So hopefully, even for those of you that know a good bit about Rathmullen, will be uh, maybe telling you something that you didn't know over the course of the morning. Outside of that, though, it's all business as usual, as I mentioned. The lines are open for you right now. You can WhatsApp or text the show 86 6025000 086 or give us a call on 0749125000. Donna Marie looking after you back at base there. Uh, also, if you want to email the show, comments at Highland Radio will get us. And if you want to watch the program, uh, hop on to our social media or our website first and foremost, I suppose, highlandradio.com. You should see Watch Live links there. Or go on to our YouTube channel, Highland Radio Ireland, or across our Facebook pages. And uh, we're going to give you a good look at our guests, but also the beautiful pier and sea setting of Rath Mullen, as well as my ugly mush. Okay, it's good to have you on board. Um, we're going to be talking about Letterkenny traffic in uh, the first hour, and also... Um, other items which will keep you informed and entertained, no doubt. Okay, let's see what's making the front of the newspapers this Monday morning. The Donegal News, the uh, Dairy People Donegal News. Garda paid over €17,000 to police set of Neeson movie. Uh, Garda were paid over €17,000 to provide policing cover on the set of the Liam Neeson movie, The Land of Saints and Sinners. Performing non-public duties at Hollywood blockbusters, sports events, concerts and the moving of abnormal loads by trucks netted on Gada Shiakana in Donegal. Over €100,000 in the last 18 months. The amount of money being paid by private company has risen significantly this year with the wider, wider resumption of events after COVID-19 restrictions. All right, on to the Derry News. There's is, uh, Their front page is a, effectively a picture and it's of uh, Casey and Will pictured at the foil pride parade at the weekend and more pe uh, more pictures promised inside and of course uh, the rest of the news there as well on to the irish independent their focus on the front page is uh, overcrowded primary school classrooms and we've heard concerns uh, in this regard on this program of course uh, for quite some time particularly this year but let's read on what they've got to say almost one in every eight pupils in primary schools here was in overcrowded classes last year despite average class sizes falling to their lowest level in two decades. Figures published by the Department of Education show that one in three of more than 3,100 primary schools had at least one overcrowded class. The figures come as primary schools around the country prepare to welcome pupils back to class following the summer break. An analysis of the figures by the Irish Independent reveals only 17% of the primary pupils, fewer than 91,000 children, were in classes below the EU average of 20. One in 20, 5% of all classrooms had almost, uh, sorry, had more than 30 pupils, but they accounted for 12% of all primary school children. Department of Education figures for 21-22, that school year, reveal more than 66,000 children out of a total primary population of almost 537,000 were in overcrowded classrooms is that something that you're concerned about what's the situation in your school 086602500 is the whatsapp or text line there and it's a direct link to us here in uh, Rathmullen on to the Irish Times now and their lead story uh, an improved pay offer to public servants is likely to be made today by the government in a bid to avoid a series of threatened strikes over the rising cost of living Sources uh, briefed on the issue said that the new offer would be no more than an additional 1% on top of the existing 5% between now and the end of next year, which is already on the table since early summer. And we spoke to reps uh, from students' unions. They're looking for something much closer to um, they're looking for something much closer to the rate of inflation. But it seems like the government is uh, not shifting, and also they're going to keep pushing this uh, narrative uh, or fact that uh, the more they give the likes of teachers, the less that will be available to uh, soften the uh, rising cost of living for everybody else. Well, unions are also likely to be told that diverting resources to fa fund the more generous public sector pay deal would mean less cash available for childcare, the health service, education and social welfare in the budget. With key budget meetings between officials already underway, Minister of Finance Pascal Donoghue and Minister for Public Expenditure Michael McGrath are insisting that the government sticks to previously agreed budget limits, which will mean difficult trade-offs between spending uh, priorities. Could we be seeing strikes in the not-too-distant future? And if we do, uh, I would imagine teachers will just be the first of a series. If you don't like spiders, uh, sorry, 
but apparently invasive uh, false widow spiders are up to 230 times more poisonous than domestic Irish species, according to new research that helps explain their rapid spread throughout Ireland. The findings shed light on the spider's dominance. Not only uh, is its venom far more potent than any common northern European spider, but it can adapt its attacking behaviour to prevail in different battle scenarios, if, if you don't mind. Exactly what this might mean for the survival of other species is yet to be determined. So your regular spider is facing a threat from the invasive uh, false widow spiders. Don't like any of them, to be honest with you. Uh, what would you do if you find a spider in your house? Are you the type that would dispose of it immediately in a maybe non-humane manner? Or do you pick it up and try and dispose of it out the window without killing it? Uh, what's your strategy there? 086-60-25,000. Me, personally, I would be a... I would capture it and try and release it uh, without harming it. But anyway, I don't know. What's your views? Okay, on to the Irish Daily Mail now. And uh, what do you think about this one? Pubs which ban patrons from wearing tracksuits on their premises have said the move improved the atmosphere. A growing number of bars have taken to prohibiting the casual attire and point out that it helps staff, but the move has proven controversial for some. Uh, People Before Profit TD, Paul Murphy, said that banning tracksuit really just amounts to class discrimination. Mr Murphy, whose uh, constituency includes Tala, Clendorkin and other lower income areas, was reacting to a sign on the door of Slattery's pub in the newly pedestrianised uh, Capel Street on Dublin's north side. The pub advised uh, patrons that toilets are for customers only and that tracksuits are not welcome. Capel Street, which serves many people from Mr Murphy's constituency who travel to the north inner city on the Red Line Lewis, is now the longest pedestrianised street in Dublin and has hopes of moving up market with new coffee shops and restaurants. However, tracksuits are increasingly being banned from pubs for lowering the tone. So what do you think? Do you support a business that uh, might choose to ban tracksuits from its premises? Um, or would that be something you're against? Would you like to see that type of thing happening in Donegal? Is it already happening here? What do you think? I don't... Uh, I don't I'm not comfortable with it, to be honest with you. Um, but anyway, I haven't really thought an awful lot about it, but my initial uh, thoughts are uh, it doesn't seem like a, a very nice thing to do. But anyway, what do you guys out there think? 08660 uh, 25,000. Uh, Drew Harris, the Garda Commissioner, was chatting at the weekend. Uh, this is in the Irish Daily Star. Um, and uh, he declared that there are threats to the security of the state from both inside and outside the island of Ireland. But let's remind the Commissioner that threats to our democracy take many shapes. This is, seems to be a an opinion piece. Being able to walk around Dublin city centre at night without fear of a fist in the face is a fundamental right in a democratic society where peace and personal safety are cherished cornerstones. We don't have that, says uh, the uh, article writer, and using public transport day or night without fear of being harassed, intimidated or attacked is also very close to the heart of a democratic society where freedom of movement without hindrance is fairly uh, top of the list. That's uh, the views of a Terry McGeehan there. Uh, on to the Irish Daily uh, Mirror now, and uh, a third of parents, and I would say quite a proportion higher here in the northwest, a third of parents say their children have not been able to compete, uh, complete their homework due to slow internet or a lack of broadband. Research from Pure Telecom found 36% of parents say their child has been unable to compete, uh, complete online homework due to slow or no broadband at home. A further 35% admitted their child had to complete online homework away from home due to poor broadband access at least once. Paul Connell, CEO of Pro Pure Telecom, said in today's digitally progressive society, the internet is integral to a child's education. It's unclear, sorry, it is clear, he says, that the National Broadband Plan, along with the government's school broadband programme, are vital for the educational achievements of our younger generations. OK, if any of you out there actually managed to be connected over the last year uh, through the National Broadband Plan, it kind of, it seems to have sort of somewhat gone... Uh, by the wayside, uh, but we shall see. And finally, in the sun, um, Ireland needs more private landlords to ease the housing crises, uh, it's claimed. The Irish Sun revealed at the weekend how 40 TDs and senators rent out private properties, though, I mean, we all knew that, but anyway, uh, with at least eight benefiting from state or council rental schemes. 
the paper then asked these politicians if they agreed with Robert Troy's assertion that landlords are vilified. The TD made that claim after uh, resigning from the ministerial role over mistakes he made in declaring his interests in 11 properties he owns. But the point that this is not the issue, it's... um, What Robert Troy did and people's anger with what he did has got nothing to do with what people's views on landlords are, generally speaking. That's the problem you see, and he's trying to sort of make himself out to be a poor landlord like the rest of the landlords. The issue is, is he's an elected politician. Uh, So the situation is different regardless of your views. Well, most of those who replied insisted landlords are not vilified but most worried about the numbers leaving the private rental market all right okay well that's uh, a look through the newspapers making the stories today anything you want to talk about that uh, caught your fancy or your eye or your ear over the weekend get involved in the conversation trigger the conversation whatsapp or text 08660 keep us busy on that number or give us a call on 074 okay our first guest joins us on the show after the break the newspapers are courtesy of kelly centra mountaintop letter kenny Attention pet owners, do you ever wonder what is the best food for your dog? Organic, grain-free or dry and wet food mixed? Don't ask just anyone, ask Maxi Zoo. We'll find exactly the right nutrition for your pet. Let us advise you in your local store. Find yours at maxizoo.ie. Maxi Zoo, Ireland's largest pet retailer. Is your Skoda a little older? Pre-loved, perhaps? What adventures, I wonder, did it have in the past? Another family, another life, bright city lights, or a quiet country existence seeing Ireland's best sights? We don't really need your car story. With a Skoda service, you get a complete vehicle health check, genuine Skoda parts, and free roadside assistance for 12 months. Your local Skoda dealer is DMG Motors, Clare Road, Donegal Town. Telephone 074 97 21 396 or visit dmgmotors.ie. If you're tired and struggling to put a spring in your step, discover the power of Revive Active at your local Brennan's Pharmacy. Revive Active is an award winning super supplement containing 26 active ingredients, including vitamin C, D, and zinc, which support your immune system all in one handy daily sachet. Made for busy, stressful lives, it's the convenient way to put back what life takes out. Enrich your life with the Revive Active. In store or online, click and collect from brennanspharmacy.com. We're here for you. Monaghan Institute is currently accepting applications for courses commencing in September. If you are a Leaving Cert student wanting to progress to university or a job seeker keen to master new skills, we have excellent course options for you. Gain an internationally recognised qualification closer to home at our state-of-the-art campus in Monaghan Town, where there are excellent transport links and and lower cost accommodation choices. Apply online now at monaghaninstitute.ie. Monaghan Institute. Your future starts here. Okay, you're very welcome back to the 9 Till Noon show, broadcasting live today from beautiful Rathmullen. Okay, we're joined on the programme now by Councillor Jerry McMonagall. Good morning to you, Jerry. Thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, Greg. It's good to have you with us. Right, you're, uh, you say that as evening traffic jams once again become a commonplace occurrence in the town, that being Letterkenny, there should be a comprehensive public uh, consultation on the issue. I mean, there is an awful lot of anger out there, an awful lot of hours lost uh, people uh, would feel, people experience because of what's going on. So what, uh, f- from what you can determine, is causing the traffic problems at the moment, Jerry? Well, there's obviously a number of issues. There's the amount of cars for start, mm. uh, and obviously the appeal that the town has to to shoppers and visitors alike. But uh, there seems to be a, an issue in relation to the infrastructure that we have in the town that's trying to manage uh, the traffic that, that regularly comes into the town. And and just recently we we installed traffic lights there on the Pierce Road, which are becoming problematic, I believe, and, and something that we need to review and, and look at earnestly. Uh, we, we have the roadworks ongoing, and a, a number of them uh, took place over, over the summer, and that added to the, the problems we are having. So, look, we, we need to keep on talking to one another. I think what needs to happen in relation to uh, putting in traffic management, uh, especially uh, the traffic lights and things like that, that we, after we, we employ them and, and put them into use, 
we then, I think, need to follow it up with a, a, an in-depth consultation with the people who use the town regularly, and I'm talking about like, the taxi drivers, delivery people, the town's people themselves, because the, the ones that we put in the, in the Pierce Road, and they're necessary, because we, we, we have to look after not just car owners and drivers, but also the people who walk, and people, especially people who have difficulties with their mobility, uh, uh, wheelchair users, uh, young people in particular, and the Pierce Road, we have the community centre, a lot of young people use that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we need to always protect and have them in mind as well. So, but I think once we employ a, a traffic management uh, solution, then we need to then review it and look at it. And I think we need to talk to the, the people who use the town regularly and, and listen to their ideas and suggestions. If they could be moved back forward, taken away altogether. But I think we need to do that uh, and, and get a, a feedback from the, the actions we've taken. Yeah, it's hard to know, isn't it, the impact of poor traffic on an area. Obviously, people living... Uh, living in the area, they're, they're going to feel the brunt of it with, with journeys and what have you. Um, but you just wonder how many people, say, for instance, now are discouraged from going into Letterkenny and shopping, for example. I mean, what is the impact of, you know, a bad reputation, be it justified or not, uh, on a town? You know, if people go, oh, it's a nightmare going in there or we'll go somewhere else. You know, we don't really know how big a problem that is. No, and, and thankfully to date, that doesn't seem to have put off an awful lot of people, but I have no doubt that if it persists, that it, that it will. And that's why it's important that uh, we, we consult with people, talk, and, and carry out reviews of, of, of any actions that we have taken to try and manage traffic. Look, Letterkenny is still building. We're, 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 we're short of a number of pieces of infrastructure. Obviously, the bridge over Bonaghy, but also bridges over the Swally, take us over to Lake Road and, and a major upgrade of that Lake Road. So while that is, is in the pipeline and, and hopefully will be coming into fruition in the coming years, we need to manage what we have already. And unfortunately for us, uh, people are, are, are feel that they have to use the town, especially uh, use their car, especially in the town to get down into the town centre to shop. We, we, we live on two slopes of, of, of two hills. And it's not easy accessing uh, the town centre, especially or going back home with, after you have a, a pair of shopping with you. So the car is very much in use, and we just have to keep looking at that uh, and, and speaking to the people of the town and the, those who use the roads most in the town. What is the, the, the plan, um, Jerry? in terms of, you know, is there? are we looking forward to a big bigger plan in terms of um, how Letterkenny is used, how people, you know, I think a lot of people are in cars that probably don't want to be in cars or they don't feel there's an alternative, you know. Um, is Other than the, the plans, the 2040 plans, is there anything on the table in terms of having a real deep look at traffic management, how people navigate the town, how they get around the links between, say, for instance, the traditional main street and new shopping centres, you know, ways that we can make uh, Letterkenny, you know, more user-friendly for everyone. I'm, I, I know I'm sort of widening out the topic far beyond what I invited you on to talk about, but I just wonder, is there a plan? What is, what's the future hold? Is it always going to be us rowing and disputing and debating over little bits of road improvements? You know, we're in, there's no harm in that, but like, what's the bigger picture? Well, there, there is a, a lot of discussions. And indeed, there's, there's consultations and, and there's people now looking at that transport uh, plan for Letterkenny, and, and that entails a number of things. It, it's more uh, connectivity for uh, pedestrians, uh, cycleways, and we also now have, you know, almost completed a lot of work around the, the public uh, bus service for Letterkenny. Uh, there, there will be uh, three electric buses uh, being, coming to use uh, shortly. The, the routes have now been identified and agreed. And I think that will go a long way to alleviate some of the, mm. uh, the the amount of traffic that we have, that we have a proper bus service for Letterkenny with proper timetables and a number of buses, not just the one bus service in the town, but we'll have a number of buses uh, up till three, uh, uh, all electric buses, which will be operating out of different parts of the town. So I think that'll start moving uh, and helping to uh, alleviate some of the, 
the use of cars and what we need to do is get people then to use the, the mm. public bus service and in terms and of cars at home yeah obviously that's like maybe getting into letter kenny but will these buses sort of uh, feel like a, a hop on hop off uh, service in other words you know if i am uh, at um lower main street theoretically would i be able to hop on this bus and end up at uh, upper main street for example yeah, well, that, that's a, uh, uh, in our discussions that we are anxious to uh, achieve was was that type of service where people could, could get on and get off. If somebody wanted to go from the Letterkenny shopping centre or across town to one of the other shopping centres, then that they could get on a bus and in a short while be there. And it's about trying to provide that type of service. Now, it may take a, a few months after it's uh, inaugurated, but I think it's through use that we will get... Uh, the best best uh, use out of it like you know oh for sure and it takes i think it takes at least two years for people to change their habits to yeah. see something is successful do you know it, it, you couldn't judge it after three months or six months so i think you really need to allow it to bed in because it it requires us thinking differently it requires us to think rather than jumping in the car to jump on the bus and that's you know and it, uh, people of all ages and uh and uh, and what have you so that will take a while but i mean that sounds like it could be a a game changer if it's done correctly and planned correctly Correctly. Yeah, look, and, and it will take time, and, and, and in all of this, that while we're mindful of the car journeys, as I said earlier, we need to be mindful of, of those people who uh, haven't got the use of a car, uh, people who have mobility issues, wheelchair users, people with disabilities, uh, and you know, we see that the one-way uh, system has been recently installed around the schools in the town, and the, the wider footpaths and have been put in place there, and, all, and that's all to encourage uh, the slowing down of traffic, uh, uh, encouraging people to walk or cycle to, to the school. And it, it's part of a strategy. And, and this is an hour short, uh, small piece of that jigsaw. But it, it's about, as you say, it'll take time for people to change their habits. But we're trying to put the infrastructure in place that will enable that change, you know. All right, ask Jerry, is there any updates on road markings? Learner drivers can't see road markings all around the town and markings on roundabouts. It's becoming a real hazard. That's coming in from a driving instructor. Yeah, well, look, I've raised that on a number of occasions at the council, uh, Greg, uh, and have brought in motions to uh, instruct the, our road service to uh, put in the, the proper uh, road markings. It has been brought to my attention by people who are actually learning to drive and by driving instructors in the past. And it's a very serious issue uh, and it's one that we're trying to address. And again, it's down to the availability of the road markers. I, and I actually brought in a, a motion to Donegal County Council that we would have our own uh, road marking team within the council so that we could carry out the, the road lining as it's needed and where it's needed. So hopefully we'll make progress on that in the your future. Yeah, listener says, why not put a pedestrian crossing at the community centre other than traffic lights? Well, this this is what we asked for initially, uh, and, and the road traffic surveys then suggested that maybe uh, to uh, allow the, the free movement of traffic from different directions, i.e. Uh, Justice Walsh Road, etc., that maybe a traffic light system there would work better. That's what we need to now review that. It, it's causing problems. It's actually moved the, the, the tailbacks that we had from the station roundabout back towards around uh, mm. the community centre. It's moved it now to a one lane from the community centre back towards Old Dunn's, and that there is causing serious traffic problems mm. for the whole time. You see, this this is the thing, you know, it feels like we're playing whack-a-mole here. It's, you, you know, we need something... Like, if we do that, what happens here? What's the consequences yeah. of doing those roadworks while those roadworks are ongoing? What would be the impact on that roundabout if we do something there? You know, I think that's where the public frustration often can come from, the sense that, you know, we're just sort of seeing how something goes and then we'll try and figure it out afterwards. No master plan, but I presume that's precisely what this uh, public consultation would be about because that's where this conversation uh, conversation started, that all stakeholders would feel they have an input. And people are people are clever too, Jerry. You know, I think we know we can't do the omelette without breaking the eggs. People know that, but yeah. are we doing the best thing to limit the problems, I think that's what. If 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 we felt we were doing that, I think most people could buy into it. Yeah, and that's why I, I am suggesting we have this this consultation on on the works that we've mm. carried out, and, and it's it's proper and right that we review any works that we do or, or any uh, infrastructure changes that we do that we look at it and see is this working in the long term? Will will it uh, do what we intended it to do, and that's to keep the flow of traffic moving freely? 
and at the minute it's a, uh, it suggests no it's not and well, the evidence is there they support that so that's no we should not be afraid about getting something wrong uh the, the thing about getting something wrong is putting it right uh, and i think we, we need a review we need to talk to the road users uh, on a regular basis and, and listen to what their suggestions are and mm. see can we implement them. A caller says Letterkenny's traffic problems are caused by a lack of car parks and ongoing roadworks. I mean, there are a lot of car parks around Letterkenny. I think really people might feel there's not a car park right beside where they want to go. Yeah, and that's a problem. Uh, you're right, we do have an awful lot of uh, car parks. Like if we go into Derry or you go to Belfast, you go to any town, you're looking for a car park. You're not looking to park on main streets right outside the shop you wish to go to. You go to you'll park in a car park and you'll walk. But people will people will loop people walking. Yeah, but people will loop around Letterkenny yeah. on the hope of getting within fifty feet of the front door of where they want to go. I mean I, I know yeah. that because <laughs> I've done it. Yeah, I might as well just be honest, you know. Like I have done three laps. Uh yeah. I'm, I'm maybe, better now. I'm better now, though. I, I, to be honest with you, I've cut myself on a bit, but I've been that soldier, like. Yeah, and there's many like you, uh, but uh, I'm sorry. Well, like I used to be, a, Jerry. Like I used to a, be. A job for of work for us to do to highlight where the car parks are mm. and their, their accessibility, and indeed, you know, the charges on the car parks are fairly uh, good. They're they're they're, they're no way costly enough compared to other towns and cities. So you know, people should use them more and. Walk about because we have a lot of uh, uh, businesses have a lot they offer in Letterkenny, and I don't think that you see what is an offer by driving your car to outside the shop you're going to. Or no, and maybe outside. even just at the car parks, you know, like you're three minutes from such and such, you're four minutes from, or you're eight, you know, maybe that yeah. would help that, that we could maybe process it a bit easier that way. Um, is there any end date for the work on the coach road? It's been going on for a very long time and causing traffic jams. Sorry, the coach road, the coach road. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the ins and outs of it. Well, uh, maybe we can, some, someone, it might be a local name for it. I don't know. Another caller says, the traffic jams most definitely do put people off coming into Letter Kenny. Have no doubt. If a guard was at the Polestar roundabout and one at Dunn's roundabout for an hour in the evenings, then at least cars coming in all directions would get a fair chance. The problem there is, and Guardy will tell you this off the record and sometimes on the record, it's not the guard problem to sort out bad road planning or bad design or bad organization. They have enough to be at without uh, effectively, you know, trying to keep traffic moving because of problems outside of their control. Yeah, well, well, to be honest, I think if they have the personnel, they have a role to play. And I think, you know, and we've all thought this, if there was a guard or two available at the full star, until such times as the traffic lights are installed there, then it would be very helpful. It yeah. would be helpful. Maybe cut down on road rage and other phone calls. They might be <laughs> other yeah. phone calls. They might be getting. All right. So, what? Are, how does this progress now? Because, in in terms of, are you, are you looking at maybe organising yourself a town hall meeting? Is this a public consultation that needs to be official and, and needs to be taken on by the by the council? How in in our, in the last minute or two? How you, do you hope to progress this? Uh, because so, as I say, uh, I... if nothing happens again, people go. Oh, waffling again do you know what i mean not you but us as you know just talking about solutions rather than finding them so how do you hope this might progress this proposal of yours i, I think it has to be done officially and I, I, I think that you know, our road section and planners need to organize a public consultation uh a venue and evening it could be the public service center uh show the plans that we have for the future but also uh, give people an opportunity to talk about the current difficulties that we're having mm. and take on board any suggestions that could be helpful. And I think we need to really look at the, the traffic light system on the Pierce Road again. But we need to have people to come along and be part of that. And they offer up their suggestions and ideas. And I think it's incumbent on our roads and down a section to organise that. And I certainly as a local representative, we'll be pushing that they do that there ASAP. Yeah, and we're broadcasting from beautiful Rathmullen. They don't have to worry about traffic today, but it's like all areas there have been concerns. No, in and the I, past. I, I see it's a lovely, a lovely photo of Inch there. I was down there yesterday with the family walking around the Inch levels. A beautiful walk, and it was a, a beautiful evening as well. So here comes the ferry. Actually, you might be fit to see it there coming in. Yeah, the I see it coming Canada. in there. Yeah, Rathmullen, fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic place, and it's so what we have to offer in this county is secondly, none, Greg. And fair play for being there today in Mile Head last week.
Yeah, it's just a case of getting around uh, rather than talking about places you have to uh, sometimes get out. Get out but... Letter Kenny. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not from Letter Kenny, so I'm not saying nothing. Okay, listen, thank you very much indeed. I appreciate you, your time this morning. Okay, uh, that was uh, Councillor Jerry McMonagall there. Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand is the WhatsApp and text line. Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand. Get involved in the conversation. Your comments are coming direct to us here uh, in beautiful Rathmullen. Coming up a little later on, we're going to have some live music for you. Uh, we are going to be, uh, let's see who we have coming in. Um, we have Carol Wilson coming in to chat and perform live. Looking forward to that. And uh, also Katie McAteer. We're going to be speaking to her after her uh, doing the county, well, this area primarily, and the county proud during the uh, Rose of Tree. She's going to be joining us in studio. We're going to be talking about the way forward for this beautiful part of the world. Brendan Devaney will tell us what's coming up on uh, the DL debate and uh, give us a run through of what he thinks of uh, the championship action at the weekend. Um, and that and so much more besides it's a celebration of our beautiful county these last few uh, weeks and we are in another beautiful part of it and i don't just uh, say that right uh, i told you the number didn't i whatsapp or text 0866 or give us a call on 074912500. our next guests join us in just a couple of minutes want unbeatable value from sky here's the deal Get Sky Broadband for just €29 euro a month, plus Sky Q for only €10 euro a month. Super fast, super reliable broadband. And Sky Q with your apps and recordings. That's Sky Broadband for €29 euro a month, plus Sky Q for €10 euro a month for 12 months. Now that is unbeatable value. Go to sky.ie. Availability subject to location. Offer does not include Sky TV subscription. New Sky customers only. Setup fees, minimum term and further terms apply. For more info, see sky.ie slash speeds. For big name menswear at great prices, visit Watson Menswear in Letterkenny. Top casual brands including Mishmash, Sixth Sense, Tommy Bow and Penguin. If you're going to a wedding or a big event, formal wear names include Remusimo, Andre and White Label. Also a great selection of children's casual and formal wear in stock. Watson Menswear, open seven days a week on Main Street Letterkenny and online at watsonmenswear.com. There's a gaggle of monsters you'll see around town in every colour from bright pink to brown. And just like us, they have hopes, dreams and wishes. A new car, new windows, a holiday dive in the fishes. They know just where to go for their dreams to come true. The local credit union who can help you out too. For all of your dreams that are big, small or strange, we've got you covered with our monster loan range. Monster loans from the credit union. Imagine more. Loans are subject to approval. Terms and conditions apply. If you do not meet the repayments on your loan, your account will go into arrears. This may affect your credit rating, which may limit your ability to access credit in the future. Credit unions in the Republic of Ireland are regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Hi folks, Paul McDevitt here, inviting you to join myself and Jimmy Stafford this Monday night for another edition of the Monday Night Sessions. On the show this week, and with Oakfest just around the corner, we welcome Alistair Hay and the team from Emerald Guitars, with a few guests as well. And we also welcome County Derry singer-songwriter James Murphy, and we say hello and welcome to Donegal singer-songwriter Chelsea Evans. So, that's the Monday Night Sessions between 8pm and 10pm, right here on Highland Radio. Okay, you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show. Dominic Hannigan is public transport regulator uh, at uh, the NTA, and he joins us on the program now. Good morning, Dominic. Thanks uh, for joining us this Monday morning. Good morning, Greg. It's nice to be here. It's great to have you with us. Okay, right. Now, we're talking about the importance of public transport being inclusive and accessible for people of varying abilities. But the problem is is, uh, that, you know, when a lot of people who uh, need um, or who have additional needs, when they try and access uh, public transport or even transport that's operated by public uh, private companies, it can be a struggle uh, and requires some planning. What a what what say, for instance, let's use bus air in this example. What are they obliged to do, to provide at the moment in terms of accessibility? Well, we need to make the public transport system as accessible as possible for the reasons that you outlined there, Greg. We need to make sure that people have got a way of, of getting around the country. And just because they suffer from a, a disability or a condition that makes it difficult for them to do so, we need to put in place uh, measures and procedures uh, to make sure that it's, it's as easy as possible uh, by law that's that's enshrined in, in legislation uh, so uh, one of the schemes that we are introducing and uh, we are now suggesting is a new scheme for people that don't have visible disabilities it's all it's 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 when when, say, elderly people or people with reduced mobility or people with a stick get on a, 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 a bus, uh, 
bus or a train, um, it's quite evident to other passengers that they may have some difficulties. But that's not the case for, for many invisible disabilities, uh, disabilities such as people with, uh, with MS or people with autism or people with chronic pain or heart conditions that make it difficult for them to stand up for prolonged periods of time. And as a result, these people m- might feel that, you know, they can't get on a, on, on a bus because it's just too difficult mm. and it's it's too painful for them. So we're bringing in a scheme uh, called uh, Please Offer Me a Seat, uh, whereby uh, passengers uh, with conditions such as those that I, I, I said earlier, they can apply for a badge and they can wear this badge And the expectation then is that other passengers who would see that badge, who might be in a seat, would um, offer them uh, their seat uh, so that they could make their journey that little bit more comfortable. Yeah, but I mean, is it enough to rely on the goodwill of people? Is this not perhaps something that needs to be regulated uh, regulated for? Because I'm not sure, uh, particularly people who, uh, you know, are probably very proud of their independence walking around with a badge looking for a seat. I I don't know what the uptake would be on that. And for those that might uh, take that up, you know, do they really want to face the awkwardness of eye contact? Are you are you looking at my badge? Are you going to get up? I, don't, I just I don't see how. Yeah. I mean, it would be I, I, I it's utopian. It'd be beautiful I, if it was the case. Yeah. But I I think it's a lovely idea. But I'm yeah. not sure who wants to. Use this I, kind I, of a I get that, and and, and the the um, one of the reasons for introducing this badge is because of the feedback back that we've had from passengers. Uh, some passengers are embarrassed to ask other passengers for a badge, or uh, they 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 feel uh, uncomfortable doing so. What what systems uh, in other countries have done is introduced this over the last number of years, and there are systems in place in London, uh, in Man- Manchester, in Nottingham, and the take up has been has been very positive. It's I think there's over thirty thousand of these badges in operation now in the UK uh, for passengers who have got conditions such as MS or autism and the research from those people uh, has has shown that up to 80 percent of them have been offered seats as a result of wearing this badge okay. it's 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 much more uncomfortable having to ask somebody to give up a seat yeah. when you've got a badge on uh, people can see that and and, and people are generally out of the kindness of, of uh, and goodwill, will try to make the journey of their fellow passengers that little bit more uh, easy and, and, I think, and will offer the seat. So the, the, yeah. the research that's out there, Greg, would show that that actually uh, goodwill and kindness yeah. wins out here and that people do offer up the seat if, 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 if they see somebody with one of these badges. Yeah, and I think the way I phrased my question would maybe not take into consideration the fact that it's a necessity for, for a lot of people with a hidden disability, not just a choice as to whether or not they might fancy sitting down. It's something that's that, that that they need also too though i suppose it's it's a useful conversation or a way of highlighting invisible uh, disabilities because you know people um don't necessarily want to have to go around broadcasting it but they do expect public transport or uh, other buildings to to accommodate them that, and they're right to expect that by the way so it, it's worthwhile talking a bit about just hidden disabilities in, in general i suppose dominic I think I think that's right. Um, I think over seventy percent of, of of people with disabilities uh, have got hidden disabilities. So it's it's not evident. They're not in in wheelchairs. Uh, they're not perhaps carrying a stick. Uh, uh, they're, they're but they have got, uh, got conditions that make it difficult for them to do certain things, and that needs to be highlighted. And, and as you said, uh, legislation needs to be uh, brought in all the time to make sure that uh, that their needs are are identified and. and catered for and I think we've come a long way as a country in doing so over the last 30 years certainly there's more there's more to be done and this scheme that we're introducing is is hopefully just another step along the way to making it as easy as possible uh, for people uh, to get to to, to get access to good public transport yeah uh, and and, I mean we're trying to fix another problem without maybe having addressed the uh, initial problem which I flagged at at the start of the interview uh, because I kind of misread my notes here but about you know we the, the sense that sometimes it seems the the public uh, transport system is designed to discourage people with a disability to use it, that they might feel it's not inclusive. We had local campaigns here uh, to mm-hmm. try and get a bus on a route to Donegal to uh, Sligo so a, a, a wheelchair user could access uh, mm-hmm. a- access university. Do you know what I mean? And we're, we're fighting mm-hmm. these little fires all around, yeah. all around the country. Um, we recently had... 
uh, a minister on welcoming the provision of new buses in, in rural areas, but wasn't able to say for certain whether these buses would, would be, be accessible. accessible. Do you know what I yes, mean? And, and, I, and I, couldn't, I, I couldn't celebrate these buses' arrivals because there was no certainty that the people I hope to sort of give a voice to, that they'd actually be able to use them, Dominic. Yes, and indeed the the specifications for the new bus fleets that were that were uh, purchasing uh, at the NTA uh, are designed to be accessible, designed to uh, allow people with wheelchairs etc. to get on low floor buses, so that it's much easier to board, much easier to get off. Uh, designated space on the buses uh, for people with wheelchairs but uh, it's not just about people in wheelchairs it's about uh, other passengers yeah, exactly. too uh, so I, we need to move there's uh, our uh, we have got initiatives within the uh, NTA to try to replace the existing uh, th those buses which are non-accessible but many of our uh, buses are accessible and we're rolling out a program to make uh, to make uh, our entire fleet as uh, accessible as possible in the near future and we're also looking at the issue of emissions mm -hmm. uh, so so the, these things cost a lot of money, Greg, uh, but the government has committed uh, 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 money to, to, to provide for, for better enhanced buses and, and we can expect to see improvements uh, on accessibility in the, in the years to come. Okay. okay, Dominic, listen, thank you for your time this morning. Thank Appreciate you, it. Take care of yourself. That is uh, Dominic Hannigan there, who's public transport uh, regulator or involved with regulation at the Nan National Transport uh, Authority. 0866025000. A lot of you interested in the conversation about traffic and traffic management will uh, be getting to those comments and be joined by our next guest as well, too, between now and 10 after this break. It's the right price tiles and wood flooring 70% off sale. Get up to 70% off on all your purchases. Up to 70% off all tiles, all wood flooring, all bathware. Everything's reduced in store. The 70% off sale at Right Price Tiles and Wood Flooring. Stores nationwide. Sale ends Sunday. When it comes to searching for a holiday, Atlantic Travel and Letterkenny deal with all the major tour operators from Dublin and Belfast to find you the best deals available. A week in the sun, a cruise, or maybe a short break. Whatever suits, you can book in confidence with Atlantic, knowing your holiday is protected should something go wrong. Take the hassle and worry out of your holiday booking with the award-winning Atlantic Travel, St. Oliver Plunkett Road, Letter Kenny. For a quote today, see Facebook, visit atlantictravel.ie or call 9126193. Whatever the weather, night or day, Letter Kenny Driving Range is open to 10pm daily. Are you a beginner or thinking of taking up golf? Our bays allow you to practice the good and not so good shots for as little as €3. Euro. Practice mix perfect at Letterkenny Driving Range. Open seven days. Find us on Facebook. Our McCullough Jewellers in Letterkenny are synonymous with fine jewellery, quality watches and giftware. With stores at Main Street Letterkenny and the Letterkenny Shopping Centre or online at ormacullough.com. You can choose from their quality product range in a relaxed atmosphere. And their sales staff will be happy to help you make the right choice, whatever the occasion. Our McCullough Jewellers, making moments magical for generations. Okay, you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show. Right, we're joined on the program now by uh, Pat McCarthy, who's an activist for people uh, with disabilities. A very good morning to you, Pat. Good morning. Um, thanks as well. I'm, I'm, I'm um, a sort of yeah. Good morning. Um, I'm, what I want to ch chat about um, is again pedestrian crossings, and also before I begin with that, the see the um, the bus around town. Um, it's, it's, it's an excellent service, but unfortunately, there's lots of cars. So if, there's, if the bus is supposed to arrive at 2 o'clock in, in, um, in the town, that might be hindered by... Yeah, you can imagine it would be almost impossible to stick to a timetable around Letterkenny. Yeah, and just for people to be aware of that, so when they look at the bus okay. timetable, um, he, is, he does go around and, and it's an excellent service, but be aware that there's, there's other traffic. All right. Talk to me about uh, your concern as it relates to pedestrian crossings as a whole, or one in particular, Pat. Um, well, this, uh, first of all, I'm a member of Donegal Outdoor Recreation, um, and the one of the ones is, is there going to Aura, and th that's um, pedestrian crossing. Now, <clears throat> um, hopefully, there's something going to be done about it. And what it is is that when you stand waiting to use a zebra crossing. People just go past you. I mean, it's quite obvious that you're there 
looking at the zebra crossing you're there with you almost your feet at the at the actual um at the the road and people just go past mm. and i do not know how how um can drivers become more aware of me standing looking at the zebra crossing or what so I, what, I what else can it, you do yeah exactly it's, it's very frustrating because of myself and my disabilities it means that i can't race across the the road Mm-hmm. So I have to take time. Uh, to so let's talk to drivers then, Pat. Amongst them, I am one. Okay. So, yep. what what is your message to drivers who cross pedestrian crossings on a daily basis? You know, because let's let's try not you, but I'm going to try and be solution focused. Because sometimes maybe it's a misunderstanding or a lack of awareness. So, you've got a minute there now. Talk to drivers about pedestrian crossings. Yeah. Um, well, the first thing is just to be aware that there's a person at the pedestrian crossing and to be aware that they're obviously going to cross um, and to be aware that it's slow down, not to slow down instantly as um, that zebra crossing, that you slow down coming towards the zebra crossing because my difficulty is what I have to do is it's a gamble. I have to guess mm-hmm. the speed of this car that's coming towards me. Yes. I have to guess what, what, what my ability is and so I have to take that risk um, should I go on or not? And yes. it's just for the drivers to be very, very aware that first, if there's somebody standing at a crossing, pedestrian crossing, yeah. it's possibly 100% likely that they are going to cross the road, and they're not just going. To, they're not just standing there. So, so just to have um, a bit of consideration and, and a bit of patience, isn't that it? Yeah, and also like it's not every it's not every um, driver that's the thing. Yes, okay. It's just for. Um, and this, it could be of any... That's for those who need to hear it. Should we put it like that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, okay. it's just, and also, see, the, the, the one at... Um, the, there's a few in particular. One is there at... Um, yes. At, go, going towards the, the new Dunn stores. Oh, sorry, the old Dunn stores. Mm-hmm. That one is not one that's... It's a zebra, cross, a zebra crossing, but it's not painted or signed. Understood. There's yeah, no signs saying so. it's zebra crossing on your way. All right, Pat, Pat, listen, you've got your message out there. It's really appreciated. Thank you very much indeed, Pat. Okay, that is Pat uh, McCarthy. Uh, We'll chat again, Pat, when we have more time, maybe when we can tease out these issues uh, in a little greater detail. Thanks for your time. Um, Now, we welcome... uh, No, good to to, to have you on the show. We welcome John Boyle now uh, of the INTO onto the programme. Good morning, John. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Hopefully you're hearing me loud and clear. I can hear you. Great there, Greg. Thank you. Good stuff. Good to have you on board. Right. So how am I looking in a headline, John, that says class sizes are at their smallest this century, uh, but at the same time, many of our young people uh, are over are in overcrowded uh, primary uh, classes. And at the same time, many of your members are having to teach overcrowded classes as well. Uh, What's going on here? What's the problem, do you think, John? The main problem, Greg, is that the, the government has been so slow to reduce the European average of 20. Um, so there's no doubt about it. Uh, they have been reducing it over uh, the last 20 years. For example, 23 years ago, the then Minister for Education, Michal Martin, who's now in Taoiseach, he stated that there's no place in the modern education system for overcrowded classes. He stated that in 1999. And actually, in the budget that time when he was minister, he reduced the maximum class size from 35 down to 30. But believe it or not, 23 years on, we're still talking about one in eight uh, of our classes being 30 or more, and quite a number actually in County Donegal. Every single county in Ireland has a class more than 30. So the reason for, for that is the baseline hasn't been reduced. So it has only been reduced to 24 uh, for this year, 25 last year. The stats that are out this morning are based on last year. So when the baseline is 25, you you will have classes up in 6th, 5th, 4th and 3rd who come in with a much higher baseline. So you can't just ask some of the children to leave. That class has to see its way out uh, through into the secondary system. So there's a legacy there. Um, it's going in the right direction, but we need to speed it up. And that's why we're demanding in the budget campaign that this time uh, they reduce it by two. And, you know, if they were to reduce it by two, I actually don't think that there'll be any more classes over 30 in the following year from September 2023. And that would be a great legacy for this government to leave behind them. 
Do you think that uh, because there are, say, for instance, uh, a lot of younger people uh, who are uh, fleeing Ukraine, for example, and uh, having to take at least temporary residence up in, in Ireland, do you think that's going to have a, uh, an impact on these figures overall, or will that just be felt maybe in certain areas? I, I think, Greg, it's a really good question, uh, a bit complicated now, this topic, because the, the number of children in primary was reduced by 8,000 uh, this coming September, based on last September. And, and that isn't going to happen now because there's going to be about 7,000 children from Ukraine, um, maybe an extra 20 a day between now and the end of next week. So it could be 8,000 before we know it. So it's not going to have any impact this year. Um, but the following year's projections is what we're talking about here now when we're talking about this budget. Because this budget won't make any changes mm -hmm. until September 2023. And there's expected to be a really big drop in September 2023. So if they're to keep all the teachers that they have at the moment in place and the number of children drops dramatically uh, throughout the country, well, it's an easy sum then. Class size should, should organically drop and it would be a very cost effective measure for government to, to introduce a reduction of two from next September. Uh, our teachers or schools being well enough resourced to deal with maybe uh, a, an increase in particular areas you know like you might have um, certain pockets of Donegal where the population has dramatically increased in the last uh, uh, couple of months are schools getting the supports from uh, government or for the Department of Education that they need as, as, as far as you're aware John? Well, if it's if it's specifically um, referencing the Ukrainian children, mm. there's no doubt that extra Ukrainian children have arrived in certain places. And I heard actually of a, of a, a an old school building uh, out beyond um, uh, Castle Finn, and that has been lying vacant for a long time. That's going to have uh, some Ukrainian people living in it now um, in the next while, and the, the schools around there obviously will be inundated with requests. So. Um, from from back in the springtime, the first resource that was made available was English as an additional language mm -hmm. teachers, uh, so you could apply for them immediately and they were forthcoming. Um, then if you had a, a large influx, you could apply for an extra mainstream class teacher to ensure that the classes wouldn't be going over the 30. And then uh, last week they announced that a number of children uh, with complex needs have been arriving from the Ukraine and that they're going to fast track the special education support for them. So we're happy enough in that regard, but obviously um, the overall problem for these children is that they're coming from a country where class sizes are in and around the European average. So they're going to get a fair fright now when they arrive in here into some classes in County Donegal, more than 30 or all over the country. And um, one of the other big difficulties, Greg, and I was saying to your researcher, is that about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. The government increased the class sizes dramatically in four teacher schools, uh, so much so that the class size used to be 21 in uh, the year uh, 2010, and they put it up to 28 by removing the four teacher, reducing it down to a three teacher school. Um, so we didn't manage to get those cuts completely overturned, and that would explain why some of the schools on the list of shame this morning are actually from the rural areas of County yeah. Donegal because they never made up that deficit uh, since those cuts. So we need to see uh, a massive reduction of two this year and we'll be going uh, towards European averages and it's high time for it. It's, we're 30 years waiting. OK, well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, John uh, Boyle of the INTO, thank you very much for your time this morning. OK, we are live here from beautiful Rathmullen, just off the pier. We're going to grab a coffee maybe whilst you enjoy uh, the news uh, coming up after this break. Chat to you soon. Looking for a course to study in September? Discover CAFRI, the College of Agriculture, Food and Rural Enterprise, Northern Ireland's specialist agri-food and land-based college. Study agriculture, food, horticulture, equine, floristry, veterinary nursing and land-based engineering. With three campuses at Greenmind in Antrim, Lohry in Cookstown and Enniskillen. We have a range of courses available from level two through to master's degree. Visit cafre.ac.uk to find out more. The Donegal Suffolk Sheep Breeders Show and Sale will take place this Saturday, 3rd of September at Rafaux Mart. Show is at 10am with the sale at 12 noon. 60 entries on offer. Online bidding available via martbids.ie. That's this Saturday at Rafaux Mart. Years ago, I used to dread my motor insurance renewal. 
Then a friend told me about O'Malley Scanlon Insurance in Ballybuffet and Dunlow. They do all the hard work. They contact all the major insurance underwriters and they get the very best possible quote for me. They have saved me a small fortune over the years and they could do the same for you. When your insurance comes up for renewal, contact O'Malley Scanlon Insurance at their Ballybuffet office on 9131020 or their Dunlow office on 952206. O'Malley Scanlon is regulated by the Central Bank. Fleming doors, not flaming doors, you know, garage doors, agri doors, insulated doors, milking parlour doors. Fleming, providing engineering solutions since 1860. Fleming, 91 48 234. Do you currently have vacancies that need urgently filled? Have you tried various ways to find new staff but didn't succeed? Let Highland Radio help you source and fill your current vacancies in the most cost-effective way. Simply sign up to our new job spot and we will tell our listeners about your vacancies both on air and online. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday during our primetime shows we will broadcast the latest job opportunities across the Northwest and into counties Derry and Tyrone. All job listings will be available online at highlandradio.com For more information, contact the advertising team on 07491 25322 or email advertising at highlandradio.com Highland Radio, we are here for you Live on air, online and on the Highland Radio app This is Highland Radio News This is the Highland Radio News at 10 o'clock. I'm Daniel Brennan. The Donegal deputy says that fish processors in Killy Beggs having to contact Spanish and Norwegian trawlers to receive fish caught in local waters is madness. Sinn Féin's marine spokesperson Potter McLaughlin took to social media over the weekend, claiming that many Irish fishing boats are tied up at the docks due to EU policy and spiralling fuel costs, while other European countries can claim local fish instead. Deputy McLaughlin says the government must do a lot more. It really is madness at this stage where you have a situation where you have uh, fish processors you know, in Killybegs or Castletown, Berda and Cork who you know, in the past would have been able to get their fish from Irish boats, local boats in their own harbour. But because those boats are tied up due to the Brexit, due to um, the appalling share of the fish out of Irish waters that we get, but more recently due to the fact that there's a huge increase in fuel costs and that the Irish government have provided no subsidies for fishermen. Uh, If you look at France, Spain, other European countries, they have. Um, We just have a crisis. Uh, Boats are tied up. um, And, uh, you know, we're having to get fish from Spanish and Norwegian boats in our own waters. That's the scale of the scandal. The education minister says English and Irish Paper 1 exams will be remodelled as students look look set to sit those exams at the end of their fifth year. It comes amid warnings from some that male students could be at a significant disadvantage if the plans are introduced due to their maturity levels. It was announced last March that pupils entering fifth year in September 2023 would sit the exams at the end of that school year. Education Minister Norma Foley says those exam papers will be modified to reflect the fact that students will be sitting at the end of one year of the cycle instead of two. The paper obviously will reflect the fact that the paper uh, is being taken at the end of one year rather than the end of two year. There will be remodelling and reshaping of paper, uh, one in English and Irish, so as to ensure that any of the issues that have been raised will be uh, factored in and will be accounted for. Police have charged a 43-year-old man with a number of offences, including assault, occasioning actual bodily harm, grievous bodily harm with intent and threats to kill. It's after an incident in County Tyrone in the early hours of yesterday morning where a man was left with multiple slash wounds following an attack in the village of Ballymagory. The suspect is expected to appear before Dungannon Magistrates Court today. The government is reportedly not going ahead with a review of evidence given by mother and baby home survivors. Today's Irish Examiner reports that the promised independent review, which was outlined in June of last year by Children's Minister Roderick O'Gorman, will now not happen. The review had been promised after it was found that a prior inquiry did not give proper weight to the 500 witness testimonies of mother and baby home survivors. The government has been called on to continue the maintenance of school libraries. In a pre-budget submission, Children's Books Ireland has called for the one-off payment of €20 million made in last year's budget to be continued. CEO of the organisation, Elena Ryan, says the payment equates to just over €20 per child in school and that schools need the ability to be responsive 
to educational needs. Schools need to be able to respond to children's interests if we're going to keep them interested in reading. We can't keep telling them not to be looking at screens and then not providing them with brilliant, relevant, fresh books that have children that look like them and their classmates in them. So while 20 million might look like a big spend on paper, 21 euro a head each year for every child in the country is not too much to ask. And finally, a Karen Dunna councillor has called for more action to be taken to protect our rivers after a major fish kill at the weekend. Inland Fisheries Ireland believe upwards of 2,000 fish may have been killed in the Glenagannon River near Karen Dunna, likely because of contaminated water. IFI say that further information regarding the kill will be released in due course. Councillor Albert Doherty says such a major environmental incident marks a dark day for the county. Unfortunately, at 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon, uh, Dr. Ferry's office confirmed that there's been a significant kill in the Glen and Cannon River. Uh, at that stage, they were still hoping to establish that's what they call the source of contaminants, and uh, they estimated a 2,000 fish kill. This was really a dark day and an upsetting day, and really, um, I think there's a message that has to come out, and that is. We have to take responsibility for our rivers and government departments must be answerable to uh, the local councillors when they highlight many, many issues that relate to the rivers. Weather now today will be warm and mainly dry with bright or sunny spells. A few showers in the afternoon and evening will develop, possibly turning heavy. Highest temperatures of 19 to 21 degrees Celsius. That's for all from the news desk for now. I'll be back with headlines again at 11 o'clock. But until then, good morning. The obituary notices for Monday morning, August the 29th. The death has taken place of Liam Doherty, 7 hour column kill, letter Kenny. Liam's remains were reposing at his late residence today from 2pm until 10pm and tomorrow from 12 noon until removal at 6.30, going to St Eunan's Cathedral, Letterkenny, arriving there at 7 o'clock. Requiem Mass there on Wednesday at 12 noon, which can be viewed live on churchservices.tv forward slash Letterkenny. Interment afterwards to Newlake Cemetery, Letterkenny. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu of flowers, if desired, to the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member. The death has taken place of Liam Grant, Drum Barnet, Manor Cunningham. Liam's remains will be reposing at his late residence tomorrow from 12 noon to 10pm, with rosary at 9 o'clock. Funeral from there on Wednesday morning at 10.15am, going to St Columbus Church, Drumahill, via the Galdena Road, for 11 a.m. Requiem Mass, interment afterwards in the adjoining churchyard. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu of flowers, if desired, to the Multiple Sclerosis Society, Donegal Branch, care of any family member. The death has taken place of Catherine Kate Flanagan Nikar Ballyworski Fanad. Kate's remains will repose at the Eternal Light Chapel of Rest, Mountain Top Letter Kenny, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. this evening. A funeral service will be held at the Eternal Light Chapel of Rest at 11am tomorrow morning, followed by private cremation. Family flowers only, please. Donations in lieu, if desired, to St Vincent de Paul, care of any family member or McAteer funeral directors. The death has taken place of Kathleen McFadden, Cairn High, Remelton. Her remains are reposing at her home. Family, friends and neighbours are welcome. Requiem Mass in St Mary's Church, Remelton, at 11am tomorrow morning, followed by interment in the adjoining cemetery. The funeral mass can be viewed on churchservices.tv forward slash Remelton. The death has taken place of Mary Kelly, Ni Logue, Malin Road, Carndonna. Her remains are reposing at her home. Funeral leaving there tomorrow morning at 10.30am to the Church of the Sacred Heart for Requiem Mass at 11 o'clock. Interment afterwards in the adjoining cemetery. Family flowers only, please. The death has taken place of Billy Witherow, Millbridge Farm, Godna Skeel, Convoy. His remains are reposing at his late residence. Funeral from there this afternoon at 1.15pm for 2 o'clock funeral service in St Ninian's Parish Church, Convoy, with burial afterwards in the family plot in the adjoining churchyard. 
Family flowers only, donations in lieu if desired to the Donegal Hospice, care of any family member or Terence McClintock Funeral Director Convoy. Family time please on the morning of the funeral. And the death has taken place of Malcolm Much Kavnali Straban. Funeral service in Straban Presbyterian Church at 1pm on Wednesday afternoon, followed by burial in Ernie Cemetery, house private at the request of the deceased. Family flowers only, donations in lieu of wish to cancer research, care of Adair and Neely funeral directors. For more details, including any family health guidelines for wakes and funerals, please go to highlandradio.com. Attention all staff, clean up on aisle four please, that's a clean up on aisle four, and Jacob who's popped in for a pint of milk has diabetes. We don't always know who's at risk from COVID-19 and other viruses, but we do know how to protect them. Keep hands clean and wear a mask, let fresh air in, get vaccinated and stay at home if you are unwell. From the HSC, for us all. With all the stories that matter across the Northwest, it's Greg Hughes on the 9 to Noon Show on Highland Radio. And you're very welcome back uh, to the programme. It is the 9 to Noon Show on this Monday, the 29th of August. And uh, just to let you know, by the way, that at the end of this week, this coming Friday, we have... Twelve and a half thousand euro to give away. It is part of uh, Highland Radio's big summer cash draw. So you have the next couple of days to decide if you want to take a punt. It's ten euro per ticket, uh, or you can get uh, six for fifty or ten for eighty. It's completely up to you. Um, uh, but if you do get your ticket, well, if you already have your ticket, by the way, you're safe in the knowledge that you are uh, in the draw for two and a half thousand euro on uh, the naughty alarm clock with Lee Gooch and ten thousand euro on this program on Friday. It's all very, very exciting indeed. Uh, if you want to get your tickets, by the way, it uh, is a case of going to our website, highlandradio.com, and you'll see a link there, buy your tickets. Uh, if you don't uh, want to do it that way, you want to speak to one of our team at the station, feel free to do so too. Give us a call in 07491 uh, 25,000, but you have just uh, a couple of days now to be in with the chance of winning €10,000 on Friday, Call it a bonus if you like. I'll take it as the main prize. Uh, 2,500 euro also available to be won on Lee Gucci's show on Friday morning. So 12 and a half grand in total up for grabs on Friday. If you're not in, you can't win. If you can afford it and you can do it for fun, then go to our website, highlandradio.com or call us right now on 074 Today could be the lucky day. Uh, that the ticket is sold. So uh, if you want to get involved, uh, now's the time to do so. Coming up very shortly, we're going to be joined on the programme by the Donegal Rose, Katie McAteer, <coughs> who did herself, her family and the county proud <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, at the Rose of Tree. We're in her backyard, so delighted she's accepted the invite to come and have a chat to us. And also we'll have live music from Karen Wilson chatting and performing live for us as well. And we're going to be speaking a little bit about this historic part of the world, the beautiful uh, Rathmullen. And we have a number of guests uh, joining us to do uh, just that. And in between all of that, we have Brendan Devaney uh, talking to us about the weekend's uh, footballing action by way of previewing the DL Debate podcast, which will be available for you a little later on in the programme. So that and so much more besides keep your texts, by the way, coming in to us. And I want to make sure not to neglect those. So I'll run through some of those uh, before we take the bingo numbers and uh, really busy stuff. Uh, hi, Greg. Seen a few bicycles at uh, the weekend on the main road in Illustrin, not in the new cycle lane uh, that was made for them. This listener says that's so annoying. Uh, sorry, Greg. Um, it's the main road into Letterkenny by the Toyota garage. Is there any date, uh, end date for the works? Well, we'll try and get an answer uh, to you uh, for that or for you to that. Hi, Greg. Stop shopping in Letterkenny. It's a nightmare to get around. Give me dairy any day, says the caller. And that's the thing that I think is uh, immeasurable. You don't know how many people think just like that. And we need to support our local businesses, but we have to make it, you know, accessible and fun to do so. Another caller says, if you wanted to plan a traffic system to block the town, the one they have the one they have is perfect. 
reverse the one-way system, have all the traffic coming out of town one way past Elway IT and make cars enter town over uh, Blaney and over Ramelton Road. Well, maybe that's the kind of suggestion could be discussed as part of some sort of a public consultation. A caller says the poll star roundabout is a disaster. Traffic lights are badly needed. And there's other roundabouts where traffic lights have been called for. I'm thinking of the one just below Mountain Top. The TAI and the council have looked at it and said no. Um, an inside bus and cycle lane will help somewhat. That's uh, according to Des. Is the uh, space there for that, I wonder? Right, uh, let's see. Uh, great points made by Pat as it relates to the zebra crossings. Thank you very much for that. Another. Hi, Greg. The problem with the traffic in Letterkenny, they block all the exits on the roundabout. They would need yellow boxes and dish out fines and penalty points. When uh, will the Guardi enforce rules around schools? Example, cars parking on footpaths and double yellow lines. Another. Uh, in a case of a real health emergency, can an ambulance move past the school traffic on the College Road where two footpaths were created recently and uh, there's only a single lane another the relief road need to be completed first before work uh, in the town can be sorted um, another there's really no point in having a meeting on letterkenny roads the road design people just won't listen with all respect to councillor mcmonagall they have already made big mistakes with putting traffic lights and one-way systems in the town it's a pure nightmare at the minute another what about geltot schools how do we maintain our language so with uh, so many ukrainians Perhaps uh, we could find a way. Greg, do you know anything about Ukrainian prisoners who've been released to flee war? Are incoming uh, people, are they being guard vetted? I do have a massive amount of sympathy for families who are coming here just uh, to escape. Just a thought. It is just a thought. But, of course, it is a thought that's being spread around uh, by people um, who are... Uh, they don't want to see people coming into Ireland and they are uh, saying things like, you know, these are escaped prisoners that are coming in and that type of stuff. I'm not sure. We have to make sure that that's not the case. Not escaped prisoners, sorry, released prisoners. We have to make sure that is uh, not the case and it's up to the government to reassure people that it's not the case. So I understand uh, those fears and if we can get answers to that, then we'll be more than happy to do so. All right, we continue to broadcast live here from uh, beautiful uh, Rathmullen on the Nine Till Noon show. As I mentioned, low Loads of great guests on the way. If you want to watch the program, uh, by the way, you can also go onto our website, highlandradio.com, uh, or go onto our social media, watch on YouTube, Highland Radio Ireland, or across our Facebook pages. And just to let you know, by the way, and this is pretty much the end of our summer adventures, that we are um, broadcasting a special program next Sunday afternoon between 12 and 2 p.m. We are coming live to you from uh, the London Vintage Show. It's a 10-year anniversary. Uh, we are going to be broadcasting for two hours. Loads of people, by the way, from parts of Donegal heading over to that, as well as, of course, uh, Irish people that are already, already living there. We'll be seeing loads of them, chatting to them, see how they're getting on. And we've got loads of exciting guests lined up. So it's something a little bit different. It's on a Sunday afternoon. We appreciate regular presenters making uh, way for us. It's next Sunday between noon and 2 p.m. It should be good fun. Loads of chat plenty of music and uh, it's also a program by the way that you can listen to on the radio or watch uh, either all right uh, i've uh, talked enough let's take a break for the bingo numbers and we'll be joined by our next guest uh, in studio here in rathmullen after the it's time for mcbi bingo on highland radio it's Monday, the 29th of August. You're playing on the green sheet. The reference number is S11. It's game number 35. The numbers are 50, 20, 74, 64, 21, 55, 30, 25, 83, and finally... 58. Phone your claim to 91048333 before 8 tonight. Leaving your name, contact number and the name of the shop where you purchased your book and we'll call you back the next working day. Get all your NCBI bingo information at highlandradio.com. If you've got great photos sitting on your phone or in the cloud, why not visit mcgees.ie and see the range of creative options available. Get larger 7x5 prints for the same price as a standard 6x4s with 100 prints for just €12. Euro. Or select from the great range of photo gifts like mouse and placemats, phone covers, jigsaws and clocks. Click and collect or have them delivered. See what you can do with your favourite photos online at mcgees.ie. 
to school at Brian McCormick Sports and Leisure. Triple black footwear available in junior, women's and men's sizes from Vans and Adidas. Match it up with a backpack and tracksuit bottoms. Ideal for back to school. From Nike, Adidas, Vans and Under Armour. Look the part, play the part. In store, online, mobile. Click and collect on bmcsports.ie. Oakfest 2022 returns this September the 10th and 11th at Oakfield Park, Ruffo. The two-day, family-friendly music event runs across two full days with loads of amazing acts, headlined by Ryan Sheridan on Saturday and The Undertones on Sunday. Tickets are only €30 Euro for the entire weekend, with limited tickets remaining. Get yours today at oakfieldpark.com forward slash oakfest or ticketmaster.ie. An exciting weekend not to be missed. Oakfest 22 at Oakville Park. Ready, steady, grow child care centre Bully Buffet require a full-time child care assistant with a level 5 or 6 qualification, a part-time child care assistant and two child assistants to cover maternity leave and a cook with experience of home cooking. For further information, contact Paula on 074-919-0151 or send your CV to info at rsgchildcare.com. Okay, you're very welcome back uh, to the Nine Till Noon show here on Highland Radio and delighted to welcome into our studio here in Rathmullen. Well, I suppose she's welcoming us really to Rathmullen because it's Katie McAteer uh, from Rathmullen. Katie, good morning to you. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you keeping? Good, okay. good. Okay, how was your experience as the Donegal Rose and as part of the whole Rose of Trilly um, competition? It was so good. Um, the lead up to the Rose of Trilly competition, I had so much support in Rathmullen especially and... Everywhere I went, people were stopping me to say good luck and the experiences and the lead up to it were unreal. And then when I got there, the tour started on the 11th of August and it was all go. We were in Wexford, Dublin, Cork, Tipperary, Limerick, Kildare, and then Trilly, Wicklow as well, and then Trilly. I can't believe you've still got a voice left. I know, it's just, it's because just it about hanging be, in there. Because it would be non-stop, wouldn't it? It, it was non-stop. It was, we were, in every county we went to, we were, we saw everything there was to see in each county. Yeah. What surprised you about the whole thing, the whole process, or if anything, in, ter in terms of what you were expecting versus what happened? I'm not sure what I was expecting, but I think what surprised me was the, like, was that we we managed to fit so much into it mm. and that you managed to keep going. And if someone had shown me the itinerary before, I would have been like, God, no, I'll never, ever, ever be able to have the stamina to do that. But then by the time I got home last night, I was like, oh, my God, we done it. Like, it was actually class. It was so good. And, you, you know, from hearing events like this here, you know, there's this camaraderie, this this bond that develops between um, you and the other people taking part. Is, is that for real? It's completely for real. Um, I was actually just saying to someone there, Every time we got in the bus, especially in the first few days, if we got off the bus at Hook Lighthouse and got back on, we were told to switch seats and sit mm. with someone else. And you were sharing a room with someone the whole time of the tour. And then when we got to Tralee, we were sharing a room with someone else for that for those few days. And it does sound mad to think that 33 girls can be on a bus together for nine or ten days and get along, but it was that. I think you could replace girls with people exactly yeah exactly with anyone, anyone with anyone you know, and then i think as well whenever the escorts got involved then it was even like more crack cause yeah. it's like because they were like they were new to it all and we'd already had like a week mm. of just the girls and it was so good and it, i think it's the fact that you really do get so tired and you get like you're you're up late and you're up early and you're packing and everything that's all go but that really makes you all just like stick together and fire through. Yeah. Yeah. And um, why did you decide to, to, to enter the competition to, to begin with? Like, what did you want to get from it? Or was it just, you know what? It's a life experience. I want to have a go at this. Yeah, it was more the life experience. I always kind of thought I would do it. And then my friend was at the launch of it this year and yeah. she started my application for me. So um, I just went for it then. And I did. I, I knew it was going to be a really good experience. And yeah, I'm delighted I've done it. Yeah, all right. Now, tell us a bit about yourself. You're a PR account manager, mm -hmm. you know, through your education and, and otherwise you've traveled an awful lot, right? Why have you decided to, because I presume you could do much of your work, you know, it's transferable, you could do it anywhere, really. Uh, why have you decided to sort of base yourself here for now? Like, what's the, the, the attraction for you? Well, I came back. My last two months of college were the start of the pandemic. So I've been back since then. Um, and then I was so lucky to 
find a job mm. here that you usually have to do in a city or you have to go right. away and do it in a city. Um, but Mary, who I work for, has been so, so good to me and so much support and I'm learning so much. And then it's so nice like being here and only having to drive 15 minutes up the road to go to work and then you come back and you can go to the beach. You can go to the beach before work, after work. I have my Gaelic team here. Like it is so good and you have so much community and so so much support mm. and that doesn't mean I'll stay forever but it has yeah. been so good for now. Yeah, it's about um, now, it's isn't really it? It's about exactly. how you what you want now and how yeah. you feel now and if if it, it's, if it feels good, that's fantastic. Exactly. Uh, and you wanted to promote your area too as part of this mm -hmm. this competition. We had a controversy there, wasn't there? Surrounding <laughs> you, what, what was the background to that? So um, the. Former producer of the Rose of Chile band poems. Of all the things yeah. that they could change, do you know what I mean? There's a yeah. lot. There's a lot. I think, and we've had this conversation. Like, I think it's it's great fun, but there's just a few production tweaks they could make to sort of bring it in. Maybe two presenters, one of them female. I don't know. Maybe just change it around a little bit. But all the things to think. Right, what should we change to get rid of poems? But anyway, you ignored that. But so I, I technically didn't ignore it. I <laughs> was talking to the producers. We met up with RT. And um, it so because it's a new producer that band's got so that but no one else knew that nah. and I think because I was the first one to go up there and do a poem people just thought I went rogue um, <laughs> but it was it was actually very much approved and there was no breaking the rules or anything like that but it would be typical it'd be someone from Donegal that would have to create the national controversy wouldn't I know. it because you know, I mean, it was like so rebellious a few tweets <laughs> a few tweets controversy but sure it's grand exactly and it's all good. Good. Uh, yeah. There's no such thing as bad publicity, especially when it's not a very, very serious <laughs> yeah. thing. Uh, but you also did want to, to promote your area as yeah. well. Why, why did you think that's so important? I think, um, like, any, a lot of people I met in Chile and along the way, they were saying, oh, I've been to Donegal, and I'm like, oh, where have you been? And they're like, oh, to Donegal Town. And they've never been mm. further up than that. And, like, a lot of them would be on bus tours and stuff, and they've never come further up. And there's so much to see, like especially in Rathmullen, there's so much to do and so much to see. And then like, Fanded Lighthouse is 20 minutes down the road, Bunkran is just over in the ferry. Like there's, it's such a good base for tourism mm -hmm. and for people to come here. And it's so beautiful. And anyone that you talk to who's been to Rathmullen loves it. Yeah. And it's like, it's shaped who I am and I am so proud of where I'm from. I mean, I'm from Donegal Town and it's lovely, yeah. but yeah. you're not seeing all of Donegal exactly. by going exactly. And to be honest, it can almost be a struggle to get people from Bondor into Donegal yeah. Town, yeah. let alone from Donegal Town further north. You yeah, know? Exactly. And once you've made that much of the journey, I mean, driving anywhere in Donegal is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can complain about the roads or whatever, <laughs> but it's, a, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Even driving over here today, it's a beautiful drive. And as you start driving up along the... The coast there. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. would you get it? You know. So I know. okay. Um, what do you hope to do into the future, um, Katie? Uh, now this is an awkward one because yeah. this is we're in our local area, right? Your boss is local, so we have to be careful. So for the time being, you're very, very happy where you're at, where you are. But when you decide to try and do something else, Ooh. what what do you what would what would you love to be doing down the line? I am very happy where I am and I don't know, I'm not fully sure what I want to do down the yeah. line. I love working in media. I love that it's so like vast and that you can kind of like dip your toe into a few different things and that not every day is the same. And I definitely want to travel more and see yeah. more of the world. And I think that's what I really missed when I was with all those girls was I missed that like having a, like, a big community somewhere in a city or whatever and there's always someone to do something with yeah, or go somewhere it. with and stuff like that yeah exactly and mm. people from diff with different experiences and yeah. different backgrounds and stuff uh, and i've presumed well you would hope to get involved in this type of competition or you know you're meeting it's networking networking mm -hmm. is so important isn't it you know when you're meeting different people and you know maybe you've planted a seed in a conversation here there or or wherever um what i think it was lovely to see the obviously the local support and the hoardings up and all that type of stuff but, you know, there's so much going on, even the positive stuff now we seem to argue about. So what I loved about the last while was the lovely messages coming into us, wishing you well from all over the place. Do you know what I mean? There was that mm. sense that you weren't just representing Ruth Mullen, of course, and the surrounding areas, you were representing the whole county. And I thought, I, I, I like nice things, and I yeah. thought that was nice. Yeah, it has been. Like, at the start, whenever I got the Donegal Rose, everyone was saying there's such a buzz around and it was it was so positive it's such a positive experience and everyone was just so like i really felt everyone's like love and support yeah. and like that like the in the few days that i was le like leading up to leave in rathmullen the messages of support and people calling to the house it was so it, it was just so full on and i, I loved yeah. it it's yeah. it's it's the scale of it isn't it it's yeah. kind of it's kind of intriguing mm -hmm. all right um 
obviously every year um every year and i try and be constructive in the conversations we have every year people are going to talk about it, it happens with mary from dunlow and others about where mm. a competition like sit like this sits in um in modern society okay um personally i don't think it's got anything to do mm. with me i watched it as i said a little earlier on i think from a pr production perspective you know things could maybe change modern modernize it a little bit but in terms of you know what and it's up to you what you want to do but what do you think to that conversation about where competition like this now sits in in in, in modern society i think from the outside looking in you can definitely see that it's like you see that all oh, the lovely girls competition you yeah. see all those comments about it but until you're actually in it like you do feel really empowered while you're there and it's very much like a lot of the questions we were asked were like what is a modern woman in Ireland mm. today like what how do you, like how are you confident how like how do you show all that as a modern woman in Ireland and until you're in that like you you might be able to you might think oh it's a man asking all these women about when they're getting married or when whatever is happening that, and there is a lot of that yeah. but that's the you element also, that's the bit that I think mm. needs to change yeah. the fact that you might spend four days in the company of a man that in some way there has to be some sort something going on do you know what i mean or if you've been yeah. going out with a fella for six years ho -ho, you know, I know has he has he got down on, it's that type of stuff and yeah. all of you's in a line and he walks out amongst you's do you know tiny little things that i think they could change and it would be really really it would elevate it even do you know what i mean yeah I, and i full i do agree with what you're saying but i also when you're actually in that and you're the one standing on the stage or you're the one getting asked those questions, you actually, it is more of a bit of crack than what people I guess, yeah. are I know, I know, thinking. I know, yeah. Yeah. I know, but it's just like the joking that people in Kavanaugh are tight. It's just, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. When are we, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. All right, so um, well done. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, it was, it was brilliant. I, I watched most of it. I missed you, but I managed to, <laughs> I know. Uh, Normally we're last or something or ever, but you were up, up there nice and early mm. in it just because things were going on in the house. I didn't get to see it. But I know from having seen it uh, subsequently and also the feedback that you have you gave a lot of people a bit of joy. And that's important in this day and age, I think. Yeah, it really yeah. is. And okay. it's important to me to do that. Yeah, well, you did. OK, yeah. best of luck with everything into your future, Thank uh, you Katie. So much. And Thank we you. really appreciate you coming down. You didn't have far to travel, but anyway, it's Monday morning <laughs> and you should be at work. But we appreciate so we appreciate your time. All right. Thank you very much. OK, Thanks thank you. Me. That's uh, Katie McAteer, a native of uh, beautiful Rathmullen, where we are right now. And she, of course, very uh, well, um, in a great way, represented Donegal at the recent Rose of... I can't believe you're only just back. I know, me either. Yeah. I can't believe I'm back. So your, your duty is sort of ran until yesterday or did you just take some time out? Um, I We had a few days just travelling around yeah. and there was a homecoming for the the, the girl who won. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. and she was, she was a, seemed a lovely girl she's as lovely. well, well so deserved. lovely yeah. alright Katie listen thank you very much for your time we'll be joined by our next guest on the 9 till noon show after we take this break text 086 60 25000 Do you currently have vacancies that need urgently filled? Have you tried various ways to find new staff but didn't succeed? Let Highland Radio help you source and fill your current vacancies in the most cost-effective way. Simply sign up to our new job spot and we will tell our listeners about your vacancies both on air and online. Every Monday, Wednesday and Friday during our primetime shows, we will broadcast the latest job opportunities across the Northwest and into counties Derry and Tyrone. All job listings will be available online at highlandradio.com For more information, contact the advertising team on 07491 25322 or email advertising at highlandradio.com Highland Radio, we are here for you. Tune in this Tuesday to the Community Garda Information Slot on air after 10am on the 9 till noon show in association with Sheridan Security Systems. Call today and get your zero wire alarm system from €299. Euro. Sheridan Security, 912025. Build a better future with a digital transformation course. With digital transformation courses from Advanced Centre, you can improve the way we work together and do business. The power behind three of Ireland's leading universities, UCD, ATU Sligo and TU Dublin, have combined to offer flexible, accredited digital transformation courses from individual modules to full programmes. Starting in September, your future is enrolling now. See advancedcentre.ie. 
With selected models readily available, it's time to treat yourself to a brand new car. Our Nissan lineup is unbeatable in their class. Call today or visit us in Letterkenny or Mallon or visit imotors.ie. At Curry's, we've got Ireland's largest range of laptops. Like the 11-inch HP Stream, now 199, save 70 euro. Or save 150 euro on the HP laptop with Intel Core i3, now 519. And get a free one-for-all gift card up to 150 euro when you buy selected laptops. Get in-store or online at curries.ie. T's and C's apply. Okay, you're very welcome back to the Nine Till Noon show here uh, on Highland Radio, live from uh, Rathmullen. And in studio, we have uh, two guests, uh, Sinead Gallagher and uh, Carol Wilson. Good morning to both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Craig. Right, um, Carol, singer songwriter and also manager of the pop up shop in Rathmullen. Let's talk about the shop first, if that's all right. Uh, yeah. What is it? Um, it is an art What and craft. a great question. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Keep it what is it not, Greg? <laughs> um, so it's with support from The Way Forward. Um, so they sort of have always had um, a kind of an idea for that um, office space there in the community buildings to have it as a bit of a tourist office. And it's been used as a community office too for different community groups, the football club and different the festival and that. And um, so they kind of had the idea to, you know, there's a bit of a need here, but the, it's only getting even more tourist tourist here, if that's the word, mm -hmm. every year. Um, so they had an idea to run it as a tourist office for the summer as well, but they thought it would be great as well because there's there isn't an art and craft shop here too. So wouldn't it be great to run it as that as well? And I had been a wee bit involved in, you know, arts and uh, different pop-ups and everything here as well before. Um, so um, it was offered to me and I um, gratefully accepted. So, yeah, I've been managing that for the summer um, since the 1st of July. Uh, and what kind summer. of work do you host there from local artists? Yeah, so it's a, it's a range. Um, so it's my own art and painting. It's um, the seascapes paintings by Lisa McGill and um, Siobhan Gillespie does lovely happy art, really bright folk art paintings. And then we have T-shirts as well, Barney um, Sheridan, and we have lovely flowers, paper flowers and um, bouquets and that by Moira McHugh and uh, Katrina Tasker does gorgeous Rathmullen kind of mm. souvenir stuff and um, we've lovely different cards and I'm probably going to be forgetting we've lovely jewellery and I could go on but there's well, about 10 or 11 artists. Call in and see and, and you can challenge yeah. uh, if Carol's missed anything. <laughs> I have definitely that? missed yeah. a few people but, but <laughs> isn't it lovely though to give um, artists a platform and a meaningful yeah, one as well because it's yeah. already a centre for, for tourism but absolutely. just to have somewhere to display your stuff you know it's yeah. not always and online's fantastic and people can have their own little exactly. spaces but just yeah. a, a public space where people can say look this is who i am this is what i do absolutely and in such a busy spot here for you know for people coming on you know um like for for a tourist spot like mm. this and, and a lot of the feedback from people coming in is they're just like oh it's great to have this here somewhere you can take something away with you from with mullen or a souvenir or even just somewhere to walk in and see nice art around you but know people uh, like to just see it too yeah i kind of repeat myself uh a lot on this program and outside of the program but if you visit an area and you form a connection with it right uh you firstly when you're in an area you want to learn a bit about that area and you yeah. also want to bring a bit back with you Absolutely. and especially if it's something very meaningful a lot of work has gone into it you know yeah. pe i presume people want the backstory to a piece as well do you oh, know what absolutely. i mean it's not literally yeah. just wow that looks pretty you yeah. know they go well what does this mean where is it you know what i mean they and love that yeah what they, they love hearing the story exactly. like most people ask who is the artist yeah. and then i have a wee story about each artist and um, they love hearing that yeah mm -hmm. And it okay. often helps to sell the piece as well. Yeah. Um, it's not just in the summer. It's going to run through. Yeah. So all it was of a bit of a, it was a bit of a trial for the summer, yeah. you know, to see how it went. But it did go really well. Like everyone was happy with it. Um, all around. So um, I don't think there's going to be. There's not. It, it does get quiet come September during the week down here. But weekends are certainly still busy throughout mm. the year down here. You know. Mm. So going to give it a go. So it's it's going to carry on weekends from now um, anyway, and we'll see. And like, there's always Halloween and Christmas, of course, yeah, coming up yeah. soon too. So. And I think really now we, you know, there is obviously a fall off in, in in actual numbers, but a different clientele now starts visiting areas that's, like this. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Maybe right, the, right. those that the, the children have, have flown the nest or they don't have children or something and they want a different yeah. experience. So. And I'm from over like Minalek, uh, Crawley Way, and my parents had the Weasley Hollows campsite there. Mm. So, you know, they would I would have known as well from that 
fact that they do change in September. It does tend to be a slightly older crowd, maybe the more retired ones, and they're wanting to come for that quieter, you know. Mm. And maybe, as somebody said to me recently as well, maybe they're the ones with more money too, you know. <laughs> well, you see, I was we'll going to, to say it, but I didn't. But I, but I, I went there. <laughs> but, but that's probably because they've whatever they've left that the children haven't dragged out of well, them, absolutely, they want to yeah, enjoy, isn't yeah, it? And you know yeah. what? Why not? Absolutely, uh, because they deserve it. As yeah. long as they're getting banged for the buck, isn't that what yeah. it's all about? You know? <laughs> Sinead, uh, it's written here in my notes that uh, you are an alternative Pope artist. Now, I'm going to presume that's a typo. There's an extra E there, isn't there? Oh, yes. Well, I could be punk too, actually. Yeah, I could be, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a singer-songwriter as well. And actually, uh, Carol and I have just recently met. Was it June? I got yeah. a phone call from yeah. Carol in June. Both of us had signed up. Well, we actually had gotten the place via the Artist Support Network mm. on the Henry Girls residency. This is an amazing residency that they run every summer. They have run for maybe the past four or five years. And Carol calls me up saying, I heard that you were doing this. My name's Carol. Are you, are you going to be driving up? Maybe we could carpool and stuff like that. And um, we ended up having a long conversation on the phone about music and about our songwriting. And um, and after the residency, we started to have like serious conversations mm. about, you know, teaming up mm-hmm. because we're really we've got we've got the same really geeky sensibility yeah. about singing and songwriting and the kind of songs that we love. So we're, we've, we're forming this duo. Does now. that help as a duo that there is sort of commonality there, shared interests? I mean, or is it just like romantic to think it does? It oh, actually no. does totally, help. yeah. Because yeah. even the themes that we love, like singing about now, a lot of my work, I, I suppose, would be, in the past, has been very largely autobiographical. You know, it's just because there's been a lot of strong emotions in there mm. about certain stuff. But I've definitely kind of over the last year or two, you know, veered into a bit more, sort of like, um, I don't know, just what would you call the themes of it? It's sort of a wee bit more happy healing storytelling folklore yeah. like it's a wee bit more of that kind of thing and i found that was very much what Sinead writes mm. about as well and is that kind of without getting personal line to your sort of journey or uh, do you know what i mean do you find that that's oh yeah because like um especially as well one thing that we bonded over was we'd both um gaelic had come back really strongly to both mm-hmm. of us probably yeah. since the pandemic really and, and, yeah. I, and i keep meeting people who that's happened to as well it's that whole thing of home and where we come mm. from and belonging and everything yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, but I, I, you know, I had missed this. Is, I love being in Rathmullen, but I had missed the Gaelic wee bit as yeah. well, you know, from being over there. And your um, style is autobiographical as well, Sinead, isn't it? In, yeah. in the work that you do. Uh, yeah, that's right. Have you used, uh, there can be, obviously, this is early days. Are you planning to write together as well? Yeah. Is that it? Okay. That's going to be really exciting, isn't it? Something new. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. We've already, there's a couple of songs that we've already begun to write mm-hmm. and kind of it's very interesting because we have the same individual process and then we don't know how it's going to be like, you know, long term when we start writing together because it's quite new, it's quite new thing. Um, but we've got a really good kickstart mm. with the Henry Girls residency, Absolutely, you know, and yeah. collaborating. If mm. you're a musician and you're a solo musician and you've never considered collaborating, I'd say do it. Yeah. You know, find somebody that you resonate with yeah. that's in tune with you, yeah. literally. And I that. presume, too, and I'm not saying this is the case of, uh, of you, but to be a, a, a solo artist, um, I would say can grind you down over a while. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Because especially if you know your stuff is good and, you know, you want as many people to hear it as possible and yeah. it can be tough. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Is this single or is this piece of work the next thing? And then yeah. the, 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 the the buzz from that dies down and then you have to start the process. I'd imagine it's like really tough and really quite draining and, yeah. you know, it's a yeah, breath it's of fresh air. Then to, that's oh, that's what lonely. it felt like. Yeah. yeah, it can be a bit lonely yeah. when you're just writing in your own and performing in yeah. your own as well. So but both at the us... same time, though, uh, Carol, you can be very defensive of your work and you can have your process and it can be hard to share that with someone bring someone in that was that's a, right that was a huge challenge you both agree I with that one <laughs> well they're totally well because i'd never i'd never written with anyone yeah. else before and i've been writing seriously for about six years mm. so when the henry girls were kind of forming us into groups big and small and saying now you have to write songs together it has to be like an equal input from everybody and i'm going i don't know if i can do yeah. this i've mm. only ever written from the mm. inside like mm. so um but it in both cases, what we ended up with was songs that I could never in a million years have come up with on my own. Yeah. So I really got to see the huge, huge benefit of collaborating with mm. others and letting others have their input as well. And yeah. genuinely, yeah. And then we found that too. And 
both of us were playing our own songs to each other, like naturally both of us were just like singing mm. along and harmonizing along and adding wee bits and suggesting wee bits. But I, we both feel like both of us have already made our songs better kind yeah. of thing. But, and the know. creative mm. juices start flowing and then, mm. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. you can also maybe it gives you a fresh look at your own work as exactly. well as the yeah. collaborative yeah. stuff. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. What are you going to perform for us today? So uh, I'm going to perform a song called Summertime. Um, so I wrote this probably a couple of summers ago at the start of the summer. So it's just a song about looking forward to all these things that you want to do in the summer that you've waited all year to do. Mm. And it has uh, wee mentions in it of a few wee local things around, uh, around Bathamullen as well. So um, I thought like it's nearly, very nearly the end of our summer. So I thought there's one Buzz last killer. chance. <laughs> <laughs> Could be the last chance. Oh, that is such a lovely Could be the last too. chance to sing it maybe. So, you like the um, long range weather forecast? Yeah, no good news. Nothing <laughs> at all. No, all depressing. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, looking forward to this then. So this yeah. is uh, Carol Wilson and Sinead Gallagher. And this is Summertime. Uh, Carol Wilson and uh, Sinead Gallagher there. His voices work lovely together. Oh, thank, thank you. But also, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about music, right? But I'm, I listen to music. There's, there's a part of that too that sounds almost like at times you're freestyling it, Sinead, and I know you're not, right? But it's a lovely sound. It feels sort of 
you know, you have that the harmony, and and then you kind of have that sort of feeling that it's a sing along, not a sing along. There's more to yeah. it than that. But that, do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, do we you wanted, especially some... with that song, we intentionally mm. wanted that no, to that's... feel very light. No, we can tell yeah. that. So you, <laughs> you tell it's not. You weren't just saying the first thing coming to your head, yeah. but it just there's a you know, as well as the beautiful harmonies. It's I just like that touch. It just feels like oh, I, I can't. Verbalize it. Kind of a loose, loose, loose like kind a, of. Well, maybe we're just sitting around a campfire. I don't know. <laughs> or something, something like that there. But you know, you can sing. If I was doing it, it wouldn't work. You only, is that it? Are you doing one? Is that it? Is that we what can we do arranged? one, or we can do um, another. Um, we can do Balthany if you want. It's yeah. a Gaelic song. Yeah. yeah. I think it'd be nice. I know we're in, yeah. we're in Lunasa here. now. I know that. But um, I've only recently written the Lunasa song, so we're yes. still working on that one. Yeah. Well, um, but um, yeah, we could do we could do Balthany. We'll do, well, I let's think. let's yeah. do that. All right. So okay. I don't think we planned it, but you know what. It's yeah, Monday morning. Yeah, we haven't yeah. played it rehearsed in a while, but sure, we'll give it a go. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Okay. Okay. Well, whenever you're ready, then. Exuma and Antalu are Maji, make Shuler Maji, Baltinye. Exuma. Er an talu er machi neg shul er machi baltinje chanik me le bi ha inavel ek torch bi yek elianu an arche na mach keleru er an moyes. Excellent stuff. That's brilliant. Thank you so much. I'm glad we went for number two. But I'm going to have to. Replace that. I'm, gonna have to replace. I'm glad the we second went. One. I'm glad we went for the second one. Okay. 
Oh, oh God, if we ever rehearsed. Can you imagine how professional I'd be? <laughs> um, yous are brilliant, though. That's fantastic. Oh, Thanks that's so great. very much indeed. That's a real Thanks treat. And I know our this. listeners at home are enjoying it or at work oh. or wherever they are. Um, it's a nice way to spend a Monday morning, isn't it? It's hardly yeah, work. Great. You know? yeah. Carol Wilson, best of luck uh, with you, everything. Great. And the pop-up shop, it's in Rathmullen. It's called Artsy. It's a tourist information art shop. It's all in one. And uh, it's a lovely space and platform for local artists too. And uh, I think other areas are sort of seeing what you're doing here and going, Aww. you know, can we get a piece of that? Which is, yeah, is always a good sign, yeah. isn't it? And also, uh, last but not least, Sinead Gallagher. Uh, beautiful harmonies as well. And um, people can check out your own work as well too how do they find you well, well they will find us in, under our new name under we'll our soon. new name which we're, call, we're called Shkelela right, yeah. right. so Lovely we'll be stuff. in Club Yo at the end of Excellent. September so, it's, yeah. I think it's exciting times yeah, yeah it is alright thanks so much thanks indeed much lovely, lovely to have you in alright uh, wasn't that lovely Sinead Gallagher and uh, Carol Wilson and we really appreciate them coming in and spending some time with us right 0866025000 that is the WhatsApp or text number we'll be back with more after we take this break Park Run has taken my running to the next level. It's a good opportunity to catch up and meet friends and make new friends as well. It's how I got introduced into the local running club. Just knowing it's there every week, no matter what stage you're at. I find it's a much healthier approach to running. I'm Dave and I'm a park runner. VHI believes Park Run is more than running. That's why we're their biggest supporter. Join us every week at your local park run. Attention all pet lovers and owners. Gary's Pet World Letterkenny is open seven days per week, offering the very best value on all pet foods, accessories, grooming and care products. Call in and let our staff help you spoil your pet today. You will be amazed by the range of product for all pets, with exceptional value on all leading brands. Alternatively, you can browse and buy online at petworld.ie and we will deliver to your home. GiveBlood.ie know we can count on you, our community of blood donors, to give blood and to choose to be there for others in their hour of need. Blood donors from Bunkrana should attend the clinic in the Inishon Gateway Hotel on Monday 29th and Tuesday 30th. And donors from Carndonna should attend the clinic in Carndonna Community School on Wednesday 31st of August and Thursday 1st of September. Making an appointment is recommended, so call 1-800-731-137 to book your time. New donors are welcome. Visit giveblood.ie to see eligibility and clinic details. What's your dream job? Lawyer, engineer, criminologist or software developer? Do you want to develop renewable energies, create the next great drama or improve people's health? Anything is possible at Ulster University McGee Campus, where you can study in the heart of Derry, London Derry. Hearing places are now available to help you realise your ambitions. It's time to say hello future. Apply now for September 2022 at ulster.ac.uk. There are three lucky winners on Highland Radio who have one thing in common. They can still win big in our mega summer draw. Two and a half thousand euros will be given away on the naughty alarm clock on Friday the 2nd of September. But that's not all because we have left the biggest prize to last. You could win 10,000 euros in cash. Yes, that's right. Greg Hughes will be ringing one lucky person on Friday the 2nd of September at 11.30 a.m. Have you bought your tickets yet? You can go to highlandradio.com, click on the link, answer a simple question and purchase a ticket for 10 euros, 6 for 50 euros or 10 for 80 euros. What would you do with 10 grand in cash? Nutrius Lamb Feed Offer, directly supported by the Arivo Fodder Support Fund, is now available at your local Homeland store. Buy 10 bags of Nutrius Intensive Lamb or Nutrius Lamb Creep Crunch, get one free. Contains intake booster for higher intakes, better thrive and faster food. Finish. T's and C's apply. Contact your local homeland or farm commercial specialist today. Visit Nutrius.ie for full product detail. Hello, how can I help you? I'm looking to claim on my insurance policy. Okay, and what type of chip do you need to claim for? It's not a chip. I was in a minor accident. And was your windscreen chipped in this accident? No, it's just my backlight and the bumper. So your windscreen is not chipped? No. Unfortunately, our policies only cover chips. Do you get the feeling that you're not getting the right cover? Well, at Local Insurance, we are Irish-owned and understand your needs. Call us today for a bespoke quote on 0818 894 444. 
Local insurance will get you sorted. The Local Insurance Network, DAC Trading's Local Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Local Insurance is a Tide Insurance intermediary of Acorn Brokerage Limited. Acorn Brokerage Limited, trading as Acorn Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Any shown credit union has recently launched Cultivate, an agricultural loan at only 6.55%, APR 6.75%. Call any of their four offices for more information or to make an appointment. Any shown credit union, Boncrana, Carndona, Moville and Moff, supporting local farmers. Any shown credit union is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Okie dokie, you're very welcome back to the 9 till noon show on this uh, Monday morning. And in case you've just switched on, we're broadcasting live from Rathmullen and we'll be talking all things Rathmullen after the news at 11. But let's catch up on some of your comments on the various topics we've been covering so far this morning. Uh, Bus Aaron runs an hour to an hour and a half late every day due to extreme traffic believes the caller on the issue of the rose of tree uh, didn't get to see rose of tree apart from a recap and declaration at the end it's constantly in the top 10 tv ratings of home produced tv programs excluding live sports and worth many millions to the local economy and uh, fair play to it and i'm not a detractor of it obviously but you know just uh, having a conversation about perhaps where it could change for the future well done, Katie. You're such a lovely young lady and you've done the town proud. That comes in from Rachel Sheridan and family, didn't she? Uh, indeed. Uh, let me see. Well done, Katie. Looks so like her mum when she was younger. That's the joys of uh, streaming these uh, programmes uh, on our socials and on the internet as well. People can watch the programme. Uh, you can do so, by the way, on our website, highlandradio.com, or you can... Um, hop onto our YouTube page, Highland Radio Ireland. If you do, like and subscribe. If you don't mind, please. And the same for our Facebook pages. Uh, Greg, the size of some of the new footpaths in Letterkenny are crazy. You could possibly drive another vehicle on them. Whoever designed these roads uh, needs to, uh, well, they say something else, uh, but they perhaps need to revisit the situation. Uh, sending greetings from the Willis family in London to all our family in Rathmullen. Well, we are going from Rathmullen today. We're going to be in London next Sunday, by the way. Uh, we'll tell you more about that as the week wears on. Why not come along and say hello to Rathmullen yourself? Uh, hey, girls, big hello from me. Don't know who that's from, but it's from someone who enjoyed the music and another listener enjoying the show. Great show, Greg. Really appreciate all your comments, good and bad. 0866025000 or give us a call on 074912500. <laughs> OK, we have another hour to come. It's going to be very heavy on the Rathmullen theme, you can be sure of that. Uh, but let's take a break for the news at 11 o'clock and say good morning once again to uh, Daniel Brennan. Good morning, Daniel. Morning, Greg. Not all who applied for free school transport were eligible to receive it, according to the Education Minister. 130,000 applications were made for children to get school buses, but around 15,000 didn't receive an offer. There was a spike in applications after the Department of Education waived school transport fees for this year. Education Minister Norma Foley says that those who live too close to schools and normally have to get concessionary bus tickets may not have qualified because of a lack of space. The Education Minister has also announced changes to the Leaving Cert today, as English and Irish Paper 1 exams will be, will be remodelled, as students are set to set those exams at the end of their fifth year. It comes amid warnings from some that male students could be at a significant disadvantage if the plans were introduced due to their maturity levels. It was announced last March that pupils entering fifth year in September 2023 would sit the exams at the end of that school year. Police have charged a 43-year-old man with a number of offences, including assault occasioning actually bodily harm, grievous bodily harm with intent and threats to kill. It's after an incident in County Tyrone in the early hours of yesterday morning, where a man was left with multiple slash wounds following an attack in the village of Ballymagory. The suspect is expected to appear before Dungannon Magistrate's Court today. A Donegal deputy says that fish processors in Killybegs having to contact Spanish and Norwegian trawlers to receive fish caught in local waters is madness. Sinn Féin's Marine spokesperson Potter McLaughlin took to social media over the weekend, claiming that many Irish fishing boats are tied up at the docks due to EU policy and spiralling fuel costs, while other European countries can claim local fish instead. Deputy McLaughlin says the government must do a lot more to support local fishermen. You can hear from him on our website, highlandradio.com. And finally, the government is reportedly not going ahead with a review of evidence given by mother and baby home survivors. Today's Irish Examiner reports that the promised independent review, which was outlined in June of last year by the Children's Minister, Roderick O'Gorman, will now not happen. 
The review had been promised after it was found that a prior inquiry did not give proper weight to the, the 500 witness testimonies of mother and baby home survivors. That's all from the news desk for now. I'll have headlines again coming up at midday, but until then, good morning. Thank you very much, Daniel. If you're aged 50 to 64, it's time to boost your protection from COVID-19. Your protection from previous vaccines or from COVID-19 infection decreases over time. Your next vaccine will help protect you from serious illness in the months ahead. Book an appointment at a HSE vaccination centre on hse.ie. Call our team in HSE Live on 1800 700 700 or contact a participating GP or pharmacy from the HSE for us all. Okay, you're very welcome back to the last hour of this uh, 9 till noon special from Rathmullen and uh, to talk and help us uh, learn a bit about uh, the future for Rathmullen. We're joined in studio by John Gallagher uh, of the way uh, Rathmullen, the way forward. Good morning to you, John. Thanks for uh, being so patient and uh, chatting to us. How are you keeping? Not at all. Very well. Thank you, Greg. Nice to see you back in Rathmullen. You were, you were last here in... Uh December 2019 for the Polar Plunge. That is exactly that? right, yeah. yes, indeed. And little did we know what we had ahead of us. I know, then. I know. Yeah. Um, life was much simpler then, wasn't absolutely. it? Uh, yeah. so but listen, hopefully we're at the other side of it now. Yeah, absolutely. And good to see you back in Rathmullen. No, it's good, and it's uh, it's good to be back. And um, you don't need many excuses to visit here. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely beautiful, yeah. It's been a very busy summer, and Rathmullen just seems to get busier and busier the whole year round, not just uh, on, on a nice day in the summer. So yeah, it's great to indeed. See. And still lots of people around. I notice yeah. over my left shoulder here, a lot of people uh, have travelled in, camping yeah. here, and I presume... Uh, uh, other accommodation providers are doing quite yeah. well. Yeah, I think I think every business in the town have probably had the best year they've ever had. And it's great to see all these camper vans here. And um, people really appreciate what they have on their doorstep. Mm. And much when we much more so than before COVID probably. That's it. And when we talk about the way forward, mm. it is about making this place accessible to people and managing traffic and keeping everybody happy, I it's, suppose. It's about a few things. It's about making the, the town better for a place to live, pe- better for a place to uh, uh, for people to work and for people to to do business, so it's to do with the development of the town in a in a way that uh, works for for everyone. What is the heart of Rathmullen? Do you think is it the pier? Is oh, it, it has uh, to be the harbour area. Definitely is where yeah, we are now. Obviously, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's it's funny you should mention the pier because um, we have a project for the uh, development of the pier now. We've mm-hmm. been awarded three and a half million. Wow. Um, it's, it's actually through led through Donegal County Council because the pier is actually owned by Donegal County Council. But it is to restore the structural integrity of the pier. The pier is sort of the heart of, of Rathmullen. Yes. Rathmullen without a pier would be would be just an, uh, a small little town with like many other towns. But the deep water harbour really, really makes it unique. And we had our community festival and regatta a few weekends ago. We had the Irish Navy in here, and it was fantastic. There was queues of people for the three days to, to visit the ship. And other than Kelly Beggs, Rathmullen is the only harbour that, uh, the, uh, that could accommodate. I was up here for the Irish. Was here for the, when they Irish. Was that the that same was, time as the Polar? No, that was the Polar Plunge. Yeah, yeah they yeah. were here they as were, well. They were in for that. That's right. Well, of yeah. course, because so they, they were. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They were, they were, yeah. They were plunging. Yeah, it was all. But that was a yeah. fascinating it little was, trip yeah. through so that ship. It's great to see the pier being used, and once the structural integrity of the pier is restored next year then the, the pier will can, can remain in constant use. Yeah, and in terms of the money, is it is it really we won't notice it? Uh, us Joe Soaps won't necessarily notice I, I, that three and a half million has been spent on it. It's really what's happening beneath it, the it's, surface. It's beneath the surface. It's, it's structural. You can't really do anything with the pier unless you restore the structural integrity. And that means that it's able to, to take a weight of 40 tonnes, which is a standard for, for piers mm. and bridges. Yeah. So it, there will be improvements to lighting, to water, to electricity supply. Uh, cameras, security, and so on, but it um, you, it won't make a lot of difference. Mm. It's it's um, you know it can accommodate vessels up to 100 meters already, mm. so it's it's a fine uh, yeah. facility. And you spend three and a half million now; it saves spending nine million in three or four years' time. Yeah. So it's good to get yeah. the the, the yeah. money spent. Well, is nothing has been spent for about 60 years on it, other than for you know routine maintenance. So yeah. this will be the first major development in about 60 years. So, so talk to us about um, what else is planned for the area over the next while. Greg, the big the big project apart. From Apart from the pier, which which um, is happening uh, next year, is our rural regeneration and development uh, project. 
Again, we're working very closely with uh, the Rigol County Council on this, and this would be a transformational project for Rathmullen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done, we've worked on a lot of projects which make improvements to specific little parts of the village, but this this is a big project, uh, which involves three sites. Uh, it involves the uh, abbey, the development of the abbey as a tourist attraction, and you, you've seen the abbey as you come into Rathmullen. It's already been conserved, but it's not really that uh, accessible for tourists. So we would develop that site. We're also going to develop the battery site, which is just uh, on, on your right there. Mm -hmm. um, and that would become a heritage center. And then we're going to develop the site, which is just behind you, which is a former Pier Hotel site. And that would be developed as a community hub. Yeah, lovely. So and, and it's about, uh, I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, but it is the way it is. It's about s uh, striking a balance because there are people who have been coming here for generations. You have to obviously enhance that but not take away from why people come here for but also yeah. you want to encourage uh, all year round population as well and make it an attractive place for people to to stay and work and yeah. for, for growth isn't it so yeah. there is there's a lot has to be gotten right through that process yeah. we're we're very well very aware of that greg and creating local employment and uh, sustainable businesses that can operate the whole year round is really important so for example in the community hub we would be providing maybe up to about 20 budget accommodation rooms. So groups of uh, TY students or cyclists or vintage car enthusiasts or uh, f uh, fishing people can come here and have budget accommodation where they can stay. Mm. Not, that's not just in the summer. That can happen the, the whole yeah. year round, which is, which is really what we want to, and, and, to and Recognizing the all year round nature of it and actually yeah. extending the season out. Yeah. You know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And a lot is maybe people feel we shut down in the winter yeah. or something. You know, yeah. I mean, a lot in the uh, tourism industry are providing a great product the whole year round. But there's people, yeah. there's some people don't like the sun or the sand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But they've still got money to spend exactly. in November, January and February. Exactly. Okay. So um, you'll, we'll start seeing that work now in the next. Anything else you want to mention whilst we are uh, here, uh, John? Well, just on, the, on on that project, we we are going through a part eight planning process with the Nigal County Council at the moment. Uh, we've already had informal public consultation, and it's been uh, people, local people, have been very enthusiastic about it. We hope to apply for capital funding in 2023, and hopefully work can start in 2024. Yeah. But the real work is getting, which he's doing is getting everything shovel ready for one of a better word so yeah. that when it comes to yeah. money being allocated yeah. that's a goal project because yeah. the people that allocate this money yeah. they like to see the fruits yeah. of their uh, their generosity yeah. let me put yeah. it like that yeah. very quickly yeah. so you are obviously in a great uh, safe pair of hands and, and things are progressing yeah. well exciting yeah. yeah it's very exciting and and we're you know we, we really uh, appreciate the support we get from Donegal County mm. Council I know it's it's not always easy for both parties but uh, we get great support and we also have a benefactor called the Tomer Trust that has been uh, helping us financially to yes. pay for the Part 8 planning. And no doubt they will uh, be helping us when it comes to the capital funding application as well. So we, we really appreciate all the, the help from both Donegal County Council and the Tomer Trust. All right, John, listen, great to have you uh, in studio. Great to chat to you again. Thank you very much, by the way, for uh, um, facilitating us here as well. Um, we do appreciate that. We'll give you 50 cent for the meter. Is that all right? <laughs> no problem. Delighted okay. to have you here anytime, okay. Greg. Lovely to see you. All right. Uh, I feel like Brendan Devaney must miss me at this stage. He's, he's not getting his uh, weekly Greg fix. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brendan, how are you keeping? Good morning to you. I'm I'm not too bad, Greg. Sorry, it's a it's a superb a superb morning for not seeing that face here. So. Come here, I can see you though, so be careful. <laughs> if no hand gestures or nothing, and so can our listeners as well. By the yes, way, just in case yes. you did take a notion, come here, Brendan. Talk to me about the the, the weekend. It was uh, much about the championship, of course. Yeah, certainly. This is heating up. Uh, we we're, we're round three in the in the senior championship. Uh, Greg, so listen, places up for grabs for the for the quarterfinals and and of course um, relegation as well. Uh, quite a few sides, five sides in total, not registering a victory yet. So they are uh, panicking about the uh, relegation playoff. The bottom four teams, Greg, will end up in that. And at the moment, you know, we have Glen Finn, um, Bondorn, Ardra, uh, Nevora, and um, or sorry, Saint Nauls and Mulford all uh, without any points. So going into the last round of fixtures, I was down in Gidora yesterday. The, the draw for the for round four in the last rounds there. So they'll all be looking to pick up 
at least a point, hopefully, to try and stave away the, the, the dre- dreaded relegation playoff. For all the other sides, they're trying to get into the quarterfinals. And uh, say the big the big sides, Kilcarris, Dunans, uh, Gidor, you know, pulling away, I think, um, uh, performing really well in the championship. They really Bally Shannon have had a great championship so far. That said, they haven't played a lot of the bigger teams, uh, Greg. And how the pot works, you know, there was, there was um, eight teams on one side, eight on another. But it was very lopsided with a lot of the better sides being mm. on one side, which made the championship a bit strange. There was quite a few hammerings given out in that, and Greg. And if you look at it, from what I read it, I would say seven teams from pot from, from one of the pots is going to be in the quarterfinals. And there might be one team. And pardon my ignorance, uh, Brendan, was that an open draw? Well, you see, they basically just divided it into two pots so they could they mm. could work off well, they could work off that. It's just how it happened, Greg. You know, maybe right, okay. maybe there's a way of looking at that, but certainly, as I say, from seven teams from one pot, it looked like they were going to make the quarter final. So it doesn't really benefit any team getting a hammering, and it doesn't no. uh, benefit any team sort of trouncing either. So yeah. there's a balance to be struck. Now uh, there was a, we're going to get uh, a full roundup of what's happening across the northwest. You've Alan Foley, sports editor with the Donegal Democrat. Uh, in with you this evening. You had a great reaction, I imagine, because uh, I've uh, heard great things about your chat with Enda uh, McGinley last week, and people who like that little bit of a chin wag, they're in for a treat again tonight. Yeah, I was just thinking, Greg, as the, as the championship went on there, you know, we're, we're obviously focusing on not uh, in the intermediate and junior as well, and we'll, we'll round everything up, but I, I just thought it was an opportunity in the in the 54 minutes of the show to maybe get a, a view from outside the county and, and some of these guys have lined up quite a few fellas, ex-players, all all top lads, just to see how they're doing and, and what they're at at the minute and their views currently on things to say. And uh, was telling us about his time at, uh, in Antrim management and myself and yourself spoke about that and, and with Connor and Martyr were coming on, I mean, everybody knew Connor and the blonde locks and the and the famous Michael Jackson reference in the T-shirt, <laughs> incorrectly <laughs> spelt. Which I don't think he'll ever love that. Well, I might even throw that one up to him, Greg. But he's probably heard it that much. But certainly, Connor Connor was an interesting character. Obviously, an all-star and, and went to a couple All Ireland finals. And uh, as with most of his county men, just coming coming up short in those. But with Mayo's new management team and and myself and yourself spoken this quite a few times, Greg. And it's interesting that the last couple of management teams, Colin O'Rourke is coming and he's, he's, he's like people would have thought that time has passed I think he's going into retirement uh, Kevin McStay is retire, retired from the army and of course the manager who won all Ireland this year Jack O'Connor is, is a retired teacher and we spoke a bit about time and certain jobs but I'm just wondering is this the new thing now that, that Jack O'Connor was the oldest manager in history the won all Ireland football uh, championship at 61 so in that, I suppose it'd be interesting to get Connor's views on McStay and certainly this whole backroom team mm. thing that's happened before a manager used to come up, he'd be given the job and then yeah. he would put his backroom team together. Now it's like it's part of the whole process, you know, and it's mm. it's a wee bit of a super opera what's happening, this player and that player and this player's in my, my mm. backroom team. So, I mean, McStay himself is, is, is Stephen Rochford. He was here up in Donegal a couple of years, a former manager, of course, Tony Buckley, who's been with Kerry, Monaghan, well, well-regarded coach, and of course, Liam McGill, which is... Another coach and a, a legend in Mayo. So huge management teams been put together to to get these top jobs. Uh, Greg, and it's interesting now that the that the bigger counties need this. You know, a manager on his own doesn't seem enough. And even Jack O'Connor had had Paddy Talley in, who's who's an ex manager and, yeah. and coach, and Mike Quirk, who, who's managed as well. So it's seems enough now a manager isn't enough to to, to take a, one of the top jobs that he needs this huge uh, ticket in along with him. All right, it's interesting stuff, and I suppose that's why the podcast, the Football Fans Podcast, because you're talking about stuff that, you know, it's not just the present, it's not just what's happening on the pitch, but it's about the game as a whole and how it changes, and you have that insight, which is brilliant. And that's why it's so popular, and it's available for uh, listeners to listen uh, on the radio just after seven the 7pm 7 news and then uh, around about the same time as a podcast on highlandradio.com if you want to download it and listen to it while you're walking or exercising or whatever it might be. Uh, Brendan, listen, thanks for that. Uh, Greg, you're about to go and continue to work on it. Thanks top, for your time again. Will I see you next right, week? Will I, or, or, yeah, or, uh, or, uh, no. Have something to look forward to? <laughs> no, I'm afraid you're not going to see me next week either. <laughs> So I'll, we'll have have to, we'll, I'll have to wait. I'll have to wait. I'll face. To, I'll face. I'll FaceTime you. I'm probably going to need no that. No problem. You know my number. I'm always available. <laughs> Cheers, Brandon. <laughs> Cheers, Greg. Oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand WhatsApps and texts to that number, or give us a call on oh seven four nine one twenty five thousand. Want unbeatable value from Sky? Here's the deal. 
Get Sky Broadband for just €29 Euro a month, plus Sky Q for only €10 Euro a month. Super fast, super reliable broadband. And Sky Q with your apps and recordings. That's Sky Broadband for €29 Euro a month, plus Sky Q for €10 Euro a month for 12 months. Now that is unbeatable value. Go to sky.ie. Availability subject to location. Offer does not include Sky TV subscription. New Sky customers only. Setup fees, minimum term and further terms apply. For more info, see sky.ie slash speeds. If you're having any hearing difficulties, at Donegal Hearing Clinic, we can help. If your hearing loss is slight but you want to look into it, or it's got to the point where you have no other choice, we'll do what it takes to resolve your problem. It may be as simple as a wax removal. Donegal Hearing Clinic, Pierce Road, Letterkenny and Milltown Business Park, Bunkrana. Call us on 07491 88470 or visit donegalhearingclinic.ie. Life sounds brilliant with Donegal Hearing Clinic, Letterkenny and Bunkrana. This week at Super Value, we've got amazing offers to help you save. Like Super Value Fresh Irish Sirloin Steak, better than half price. Kylie Minogue Sauvignon Blanc, save 33%. And don't forget, with Super Value's unbeatable own brand range, along with money off vouchers every week, Super Value makes saving money as easy as... One, two, three, go! Enjoy alcohol responsibly. What's your dream job? Lawyer, engineer, criminologist or software developer? Do you want to develop renewable energies, create the next great drama or improve people's health? Anything is possible at Ulster University McGee Campus, where you can study in the heart of Derry, London Derry. Clearing places are now available to help you realise your ambitions. It's time to say hello future. Apply now for September 2022 at ulster.ac.uk. OK, you're very welcome back to Rathmullen into studio. It's uh, Declan Meehan, chair of the Rye Community Centre. Good morning, uh, Declan. Good morning, Greg. It's great to be down here in lovely Rathmullen. Isn't it nice? It's what a way to spend a Monday morning. Yeah, absolutely fantastic and great weather for it as well. Yeah. A nice buzz around. Exactly. And I wasn't expecting it, to be honest with you, but we were up in Malland uh, last Monday or Friday. I can't remember when it was. And Monday. And... Uh, I didn't expect to see anyone because, you know, it's early in the morning, it's Monday morning, and lo and behold, about 9.30, you know, things started to life and open. It's lovely to see it. Um, talk to me about this area for you, um, Declan, what it means to you, what you love about it. Yeah, well, I'm obviously just from over the road in Milford, um, but living up in Rye and lived for a while in Rathmullen as well. Um, I think that Rathmullen in particular is just such a special place. There's just always a great atmosphere around it. Um, it's obviously stunning to, to be in. Uh, the people are fantastic. Um, and so when I moved back um, with my now husband, um, Rathmullen was a place that we wanted to come to and be in this general area between Milford, Rathmullen, uh, or Milford, Rathmullen and Rye because it is just such a fantastic area and there's so much to see and do in it and the people are brilliant. So, yeah, it's great. Talk to me about the Rye Community Centre because I would say you could get people from big, I have to be careful with this one, you could get people from big towns, right, and they might go up there and go, well, what's this doing here? You know, mm -hmm. where, where did the money for this come from? You know, uh, it, it, you know, there's no one around. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't know the full story because it is an amazing facility, right? It does seem a little bit off the beaten track, but it is used by hundreds of people from the local community and the beyond I don't know how many young people are in and out of that facility, uh, but it is incredibly uh, well used. You know, it's almost like if you build it, they'll come type of a thing, isn't it? Absolutely. It's the best example of that. Um, and to borrow a line from my colleague on the committee, Fiona Boy, she says, it's in the middle of nowhere, which means it's in the middle of everywhere. Well, I never said that. But anyway, <laughs> if, if I'd known that was but, Fiona's view, yeah, I could exactly. have been slightly more blunt. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and that is the beauty of it. It is like, you know, yeah. uh, within a very short distance of Milford, Remelton and Rathmullen. Um, but it and pulls in too from Downing, and, and it, it pulls, pulls in from Carragart and yeah. uh, the other areas on, on that. Like it is, as you say, it is the middle of nowhere, but it is the middle of everywhere for those people. Yeah, and I think the other reason is, you know, geography aside, we have an amazing committee in place. Um, I've only been on the committee for just over two years when I moved into the area. But I mean, there's people who've been there since day dot. Uh, they work exceptionally hard and the committee works together really well to meet the needs of the community. Mm -hmm. And rather than, kind of, I suppose, deciding what should be in place or what should be facilitated, you know, we very regularly consult with the local community about what they would like to see mm -hmm. in the community but centre. But listen, that makes an awful lot of sense because, A, firstly, you know, you're, you're giving the people what they want, but B, 
you're not telling them what they want, and then it doesn't. You don't have people going, "Oh well, this." Everyone has a say. So if you've had an opportunity to have a, your say, you feel you've been listened to. That's how you successfully run a committee in a community area in a, in, a, in an area. Is my in my view absolutely. I mean, I think it's the the only way to do it. Um, it also makes sense from a financial point of view. Like we have a very large community centre up there and we have running costs and overheads that we need to cover on an annual basis. So whatever we put on in the centre needs to bring money back in mm. for us. Now we're very happy with how we charge people. It's very affordable, it's subsidised. Um, we received funding a few years ago to become a sports and physical activity hub uh, through Donegal Sports Partnership. So it's allowed us to uh, have more activities on in the centre for people. Uh, and we have our first ever staff member there, Soraya McGeever, who does a fantastic job as sports What's she like as a person? Coordinator. She's fantastic. She? <laughs> She's brilliant. She's a real... No, I, I know, know Soraya, by the way. Know. Just a, you do know? Yes. All right, okay, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. But uh, it's people like Soraya, though. Mm -hmm. They put in so much of their time. Absolutely, yeah. But I, I, mean, I presume they do because they get so much out as well. But it's, yeah. it's uh, unbelievable... Uh, how much time the likes of Soraya and others right across the county, what they give, isn't it? But it must exactly. be so rewarding as well. It's rewarding, and I think oftentimes it goes, um, I suppose, unspoken and unthanked. So I think it's great to have opportunities like this mm. to highlight the work that's going on in a community and in an mm. area, um, because it is vitally important. The other thing is that with COVID, obviously, we have such, I think, a greater appreciation for community work and you know community volunteerism and mm. everything that goes on in our communities that we missed over the two years of the pandemic yeah. as well and this is not to put anywhere else down this is to elevate what you are doing i think it's a fine example of what can be achieved mm. uh, and you don't stand still you don't say right we've got this building you go right do we need to replace the the floors of the basketball court mm. or what can we do with that space over there or you know maybe if we put in an astro pitch we'd have more of a all year round offering and what do you need for that what do you might need some floodlights or whatever talk to me a little bit about the sort of constantly moving forward and, and the, the the importance and benefit of that well the benefits obvious but you know what i mean yeah absolutely i mean as i said the community center is quite large and there's a you know there has been a, a decent amount of land around it as well what we've started doing over the past two years um is i suppose taking a whole campus approach if you like to try and develop every square inch of it mm. to for the benefit of the community so we were very successful in securing sports capital funding for an Astro pitch, which will benefit everyone in the community, including local sports clubs, to use that as a facility whenever it is uh, finally completed. And we hope to start work on that later this year. Received €150,000 in funding for that. And we're currently fundraising for the shortfall in that. Um, so we have a development draw on at the moment. Uh, tickets are 50 euro. They can check out our social media <laughs> if they'd like to support the excellent work Rye Community Group are doing. Um, but yeah, we, we also have um, received a lot of support in developing every square inch mm. of the place. So we opened a new play park and barbecue area um, earlier this year. We received 40,000 in funding through CLAR funding from Donegal County Council. Uh, and we also received further CLAR funding now to develop another pocket of land that we have at the rear of the centre and that's going to become a community garden and allotments. So it is, again, about identifying the need, about um, investing in an area that's currently underdeveloped mm. and making sure that every square inch of it has been used for the benefit of the community. But also, too, there is funding out there mm -hmm. through, through, through various uh, channels. That money, is gonna, that money is sitting there ready to be drawn down. If you have the right plan, yeah. you know how to put together an application and yeah. you can show what can be achieved with it. You know what I mean? It, this is, uh, there's, there's no preferential treatment for Rye Community Centre here. This is a case of saying, I presume you sit down and go, right, this is what we can achieve. What funding stream can we apply for? And get in there and, and you know, the noisiest uh, wheel gets the oil side of thing. Yeah, I think that that's true. I think, you know, community groups are always looking for funding and it can be challenging for people who aren't familiar with the terrain. And, you know, community groups are always run by volunteers. So it's, it's a, it is time consuming to do that. But it's worth putting the time in if you want to get the funding. Mm. Um, having a business plan, having a strategic plan, all those things sound really daunting. But there's lots of support out there for community groups to do that. And Donegal Local Development Company in particular are fantastic at supporting community mm. groups, both through application uh, processes, but also in, I suppose, becoming more strategic about their community group mm. to show that they have plans in place 
which makes it more attractive for funders to give the money as yeah, well. And that's sure. really important. So we, we've talked about what's there and all that, but for people in the general area, and it, it, you know, there's an awful lot, to, uh, it's a big catchment area. What's planned, uh, any highlights planned for the next couple of months? What facilities, or not facilities, what function? What stuff is available? Should yes. we just go with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. What classes, what courses, whatever? Yeah, so now in the second week of October, or second week of September, sorry, uh, we'll be starting our autumn and winter schedule of classes again. So we will have physical activity and sports classes for people of all abilities. So we have chair exercise and activities for older people. We have teen circuits and Zumba for teenagers and younger people. Um, we have men on the move. Um, we will hopefully have women on the move as well if the demand is there. And we were looking at that again this year. But it's all about getting people involved in sports and physical activity that, you know, traditionally maybe find it difficult mm. to get involved. Mm -hmm. um, our Men on the Move group in particular has been an absolute roaring success where we have men of all ages who would never have been involved in physical activity or sports since they were maybe teenagers um, getting involved. They've all been in to the GP the and the GPs, <laughs> not the GPs put the blood pressure monitor on and says, yeah. by the way, is there any... Uh, <laughs> Exactly. activities in your area yeah. <laughs> but it's, it is it's it's fantastic and those sort of initiatives are really important to get people into physical activity but also the social side yeah. of it as well because social isolation is such a huge issue but the thing is you have to go to one of these things first because you, you do you know because yeah. people might go oh, it's not for me or i don't know they're designed to be welcoming and accommodating and everyone's in the same boat and oh, you go sense. once and that's it you'll be hooked then yeah i know anyone who's listened to this thinking, oh, I don't know, you know, just bite the bullet and come along because yeah. they're extremely friendly and welcoming. We have excellent facilitators. Everyone is in the same boat and everyone's all feeling a bit self-conscious. Mm. But once you get into it, it's really worthwhile and it'll be fantastic for both your physical and mental yeah. health. All right. And that community centre's kitchen is bigger than my house. Yes, <laughs> we do. We have a fantastic commercial kitchen there. <laughs> really? um, it's else, available it? to rent. But is it like really? Rent it. Okay. Yes, it is. We actually had... Um, a uh, catering company who were renting it last year. To take away from there, did they also they call delivery? Just, for... They were doing foods for the markets and right. shops and were different they? things. Okay, They're actually now Rosh and Mateus who run the Bridge Bar restaurant ah. in Remelton. So uh, it's a great incubator kitchen for, for projects and businesses. So if you anyone need to would get like a sandwich board or something. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so um, yeah, it, 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 fantastic. Yeah. Really okay. good Good stuff. There. Listen, well done to you and, and Soraya and everybody else and Fiona and all the other people. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of people to uh, make such a success of something. Uh, and we appreciate your time as always, Declan. Good to have you in. Brilliant. All right, thanks Thank very you very much. much. Cheers. No, it's uh, Bye it's great to have you in. All right, Declan uh, Meehan there, Chair of the Rye Community Centre. Right, we will take a break. We've got a few more people for you to meet. Keep your texts coming into us, by the way. 08660 25000 is the WhatsApp or text number. Beautiful music. Uh, Sinead and Car Carol sang. I was transported back to my favourite secluded spot at the beach. Nostalgic as well. I hope the new plans for the pier uh, hotel area be in keeping with the traditional architecture of the town. And I touched on that with uh, uh, with John. Uh, Charlie Devlin of the Loch Swilly Sea Angling has four junior anglers in the World Championships in September in Portugal. And Mark Diver qualified for the World Championship seniors all fishing out of Rathmullen with the wish the junior team uh, good luck. All right. OK. No, uh, more than happy to do so. We'll be back uh, with more on the programme after we take this break. <laughs> With selected models readily available, it's time to treat yourself to a brand new car. Our Kia lineup is unbeatable in their class. Call today or visit us in Letterkenny or Mallon or visit imotors.ie. M&S, school uniform for curious minds. Today, I jumped in three massive puddles before the bell rang. We went on an adventure in the garden and met a snail. And we were monsters running in the playground. And then I made a volcano out of beans and mashed potato. It was so messy. Then we were superheroes on our scooter. Can we go home now? Because I want to try and do it again. For kids that never stop, M&S Super Durable, Sustainable, hand downable and Kid-Proof School Uniform for Curious Minds. Available in-store and online now. Discover your dream Donegal wedding by choosing a Gallon Hospitality Hotel for your special day. Jackson's and Villa Rose exude elegance, quality and a wealth of experience in executing the perfect wedding reception. Come along to Jackson's Hotel and the Villa Rose Hotel on Sunday, September 11th as they present their Autumn Wedding Venue Showcase and view their complete wedding offering. Visit gallangroup.com to find out more. There are many reasons people are switching to Clear Mobile. Serious deal. Simple as. Customer service is A1. Great coverage. There you go. 
Unlimited calls, texts and data with 99% 4G population coverage from $12.99 a month for a limited time. You clear? They are. Switch today at clearmobile.ie. 30-day contract. Activation fee and fair usage applies. Max data speed 5 megabits per second. $12.99 subject to eligibility. Offer ends 30th of September 2022. See clearmobile.ie for terms. Fleet Owners, Calgo Defenders is your one-stop supplier for all your vehicle technology, including GPS vehicle tracking, remote tachograph downloading solutions, dash cams or 4G multi-camera systems. For more information, call Calgo Defenders on 074-9710-110 or visit cargodefenders.ie. Okay, uh, I want to say a big hello to Polly and Evie there. Uh, glad you came to Rathmullen from your last holiday weekend. Good luck with school. Okay, they're not at school yet. Hiya, Polly. Hiya, Evie. Great to have you here as well. Okay. Right, we're joined in studio by our next two guests. They are uh, Caroline Karen and Miriam Perdue. Morning swimming group. Is it a group of two or are there more of you? There's about there's about seventy on the WhatsApp group. It's amazing. It's a very casual group, so you just turn up when you turn Who up. Who fancies it this morning? Sort of a thing, is yes, it? Yes, like exactly. That? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, are you subject to the tide here? We are. Yes. Um, to to a certain extent. I mean, if you want to swim, you just can swim any time. But it's a much nicer swim when you get a full tide. But. Yeah. We swim even at very low tide. Low tide we swim. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, why? Why? <laughs> makes you feel good. Yes. I've start. I've been. I've been here for f nearly four years. I started just after lock the first lockdown, and I've not stopped. Yeah. It's just you get out and you've got such a high. It's brilliant. And it's. Uh, I presume it's physical and emotional too, isn't it? Um, it it releases kind of serotonin into the into the bloodstream, which mm. is a happy happy drug. So. You come out and especially when it's a cold mm. day, when you've done a cold swim, you come out with a kind of a high mm. and it lasts for about four hours and it, it is a happy high and it, it's very, very good if you wanted to get your housework done because you are buzzing, you get yeah. it done. It's a great way to start yeah. your day, it's like making Brilliant. your bed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's an extraordinary high, you know, I've never experienced anything that does, does that. Yeah. Um, and I think this, a lot of people took up this during lockdown. That's right. Yeah. Uh, how many kept it going or how many sort of went back to the... Uh, pre I, would say, oh, that I, I would say most people started it around about yeah. when I did and then carried on. Yeah. I think it was, it, was such a good, it was such a good thing that you'd just come down, swim for 20 minutes, half an hour and go home again and it was your exercise mm -hmm. for the day. I think that the, the group gets bigger as we as we get through and yeah. i think the sunday group it's hit and miss in the summer it's less people i think but in the winter people. we get we get quite a lot of people in the winter God and you kind of would think it'd be the reverse exactly. wouldn't you exactly. yeah and the sea it's not right it's not as simple as you know all oh, right it's 22 degrees outside and it's sunny that means swimming is going to be glorious it depends on the time of year and the general trend in the, the water temperatures doesn't it well we, we swim most days mm. all through the year rarely do we get stopped by the weather if it's very rough at the sea you know we would just but the say, temperature wouldn't put you off no, no. temperature doesn't put us no, off no. Uh, either the air temperature or the sea temperature uh what puts us off is if it's a bit rough in the sea and yeah. it's a bit risky well, for our safety that, yeah that makes we, sense we doesn't wouldn't, it we yeah. wouldn't swim. because we're told about taking a cold shower in the morning apparently it's very yeah. good for slowing your heart rate and stuff like that yeah. there well this is that to the extreme isn't it this is more yeah. than a shower this is yes. a it's a complete but, submergence. But it's more enjoyable, I think, yeah. than having a cold shower. I think because I've swam recently in Greece and it wasn't the same feeling at it's all. It's too warm. It was too warm. <laughs> and I came back and I was so glad to be back in the water here. It was it I was quite surprised. Yeah. But it was it's a real when the snow is on the beach and you're swimming, it's just amazing. Yeah, so when everyone was doing the polar channel challenge here a couple of years ago, you were like, What well, I did that twice this morning. Is that it? Is that was the sort of sense? Yeah. yeah. I know. It, it, you were chatting about the stress. The research shows that um, if you do the cold water swimming six times, yes, you you reduce the stress, the shock of the, getting into the cold mm. water by fifty percent. Yeah, but not only is it the shock of getting into the cold water, but the stress of your life you've reduced it by fifty percent. Mm. That shock of stress, so it is it's very good for your well-being if you're under stress. And when when during lockdown or 
the nurses used to come down from the hospital for this one, they would come down and the jaws would be set and the teeth right. would be clenched together and they wouldn't be speaking and they would get into the cold water and the next thing you'd hear the giggle go up. Yeah. yeah. And you could see the faces change when they got into it. So it does release some tension in the body. Mm. It reduces your stress big time. Yeah, it would certainly take your mind off things, I think, for the, <laughs> oh, yes. for the first oh, yes. while, wouldn't it? Yes. And is it, it, it catches you then, so if you get if you get doing it on a regular basis, it's hard to stop then, isn't yeah. it? It's like something's missing in your day exactly. if you haven't happened exactly. to do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right. exactly. And um, 17 in the WhatsApp group, is it growing or what do you invite new members? Is it all different age groups, all people with different yeah. backgrounds? We, I think any t- anytime we meet anyone, we including yourself invite you down come down come for a swim and then and then they just start from there really mm. i think because we've i've certainly got such a buzz from it and it's such a social thing as well now especially on a sunday that you just you just become part of a, a little group and everyone together just enjoys it what's the technique for getting into the water because i would be, <laughs> I, I am the one that puts the ankle in and oh i can't do it and all that kind of is just it just go for it just yeah. keep walking and, and when you get into the water don't get out just swim like yeah hell and harder mm. to keep yourself warm and then after a few a minute or two you feel the body just mm. relaxing and you can slow down and presumably some do it with wetsuits on others choose not to it's up to the individual isn't it it's up to the individual yeah. i mean during the winter when it's really cold we have sort of t-shirt rash vests yeah. that we wear and gloves and socks because can't stand well the extremities yes, you can't exactly. really get used to that can you exactly. i mean that's a biological thing isn't yeah it? You have yeah to... but there are but there are but wetsuits there aren't that many people who wear wetsuits mm. to be honest I yeah and um, is the what way does the water in terms of temperature um i suppose maybe it depends on the body of water but it's starting to hit its peak at the moment now the it actual is. water temperature yeah. isn't it because yeah. <clears throat> it, it takes a while to heat up and then obviously cool down it's about 16 17 degrees at the minute balmy and then it goes down to about Five, six. And that would be sort of March. Yeah, yeah February, March. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's when it the the air it, the sea is warmer than the air, and yeah. that's a nice feeling. That's mm. when you start seeing uh, less blue ticks on the WhatsApp messages. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just avoid no, it around. No, oh, exactly that's just, the opposite. That's people, just me then. People come in. <coughs> people come in because um, they love the the feel of cold water. You get you'll get more doing doing it daily. At that yeah. time of year, yeah. Yeah. and and what this is in this area, do you, are there sort of an interconnection of groups in other parts of the northwest? Like, is this a particular hot spot for this now, or, or where else is it, really active? I think this is a main area because of Letterkenny. It's an ear speech to Letterkenny, but garden the garden swimmers do it in the lake. Mm. Now they really are hardcore because fresh water is a lot colder in winter than the sea. I'd so say so. They're they're, they're hardcore. Okay. Yeah, well, but listen, they, they come down to us for swims as well. Yeah. You know? If they want to experience yeah. a nice warm water, they come down here yeah. in January. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant thing. If anyone wants to get involved, how do they do so? Because it, it's clear it's a very welcoming group of people. These are a very welcoming group of people. Well, if they want to contact me, um, I'll leave my phone number brilliant. with you. Yeah. And they can contact you and get the number. Or um, they can just appear at about quarter to ten on a Sunday. We have a kind of a casual swim group we just form here at the car park and just go in as we come and then we have a cup of coffee and maybe a cacamole afterwards yeah and it's just simple isn't it it's, yeah. it's just something that unites people uh, yeah. and it's not complicated it's not no. like skydiving you know <laughs> no you no. don't have to do it in tandem no. or anything this it sounds brilliant it sounds like it's a lovely thing yes. um, and it sounds you've like benefited great and it's kind of thing like it sounds to me like one of those things whereby you want everyone to try it so they can understand yeah, exactly. the advantage exactly. of it if you do exactly. it you'll get it is yes. it that sort yes, of a thing exactly. right listen caroline and uh Mariam, it's been lovely having both of you in studio you're yes, from the morning swimming group and uh we'll retain your contact details in case anyone wishes to uh get involved as well that's great thank, thank you thank you, very thank you very much. so much okay well, lovely having you in both of you thank you, thank you. uh right oh eight six sixty twenty five thousand that's the whatsapp and uh text line and uh you've been using it say can you say hello to sandra and dolores Sheridan from cousin Eileen Grant from Illies. Uh, does the water be very strong? I'd love to try it, but would be weary people uh, when they aren't many people around. Okay, actually, while you're still here, which one of you wants to answer that? Um, it's, it's probably not the best thing to do on your own because no, you know, no. and especially if you don't know the water down yeah. here. But if that person wants to contact me 
I can arrange for one of us to go with her, mm -hmm. or you know, one of the group. Show them the ropes, just, and yeah. show them the ropes. Yeah. Exactly. But Rathmullen actually is quite a, a safe. Beach, yeah. and we don't swim deeper than waist. Mm. We, sure, why even would you? There's no need. Yeah, to. We, yeah. there is no need. Yeah. Um, it's safety first, so we just stay waist deep yeah. and swim that way. It's but if that person wants to contact, do please do. And some people do, and that's fine. But it probably is not advisable to do this type of activity on your own. I no. don't think, because um, no. I know actually of cases where people were they got a wee bit of difficulty and there was no one there to now That's they right. did they were all right but you can see how quickly yeah. something uh, less uh, good might happen all right listen caroline and miriam thank you very much for that okay it is thank the nine till noon show back with more on the program after we take this break there are three lucky winners on highland radio who have one thing in common they can still win big in our mega summer draw two and a half thousand euros will be given away on the naughty alarm clock on friday the 2nd of september but that's not all because we have left the biggest prize to last you could win ten thousand euros in cash yes that's right greg hughes will be ringing one lucky person on friday the 2nd of september at 11 30 a.m have you bought your tickets yet? You can go to highlandradio.com, click on the link, answer a simple question and purchase a ticket for 10 euros, 6 for 50 euros or 10 for 80 euros. What would you do with 10 grand in cash? Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors, serving Letter Kenny and the surrounding areas for over 100 years. Charlie McClafferty Funeral Directors, let our family take care of your family and guide you through a difficult time. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner, breakfast, lunch, dinner. When school's back, it's non-stop. Luckily, there's bags of food savings at Lidl. Get bird's eye chicken burgers reduced from 3 45 to just 2 euro. A bunch of bananas, only 49 cent. And a multi-pack of John West tuna, just 4 75 Now, their offer's worth repeating. School days cost less at Lidl. More for you. Do you suffer from high cholesterol, menopause symptoms, digestive issues, anxiety, aches and pains, or a lack of energy? The highly trained team at the Natural Way Letter Kenny can provide advice on natural remedies for a number of individual health issues. The Natural Way also has its own brand of herbal treatments to help fight fatigue, relieve digestive discomfort, maintain a healthy immune system, and alleviate common menopause symptoms. The Natural Way at Letter Kenny Shopping Centre, your one stop health shop. A fundraising dance in memory of Mary McCann will take place Friday 2nd of September in the Halfway House Burnfoot with music by Jimmy Buckley, Dance Support Act, Sister Act. Spot prizes on the night, doors open 9.30, tickets 15 euro pay at the door with proceeds to the Donegal Hospice. OK, you're very welcome back to the programme. We welcome uh, into studio now, into our studio here in Rathmullen. Morris Kelly, PRO of Rathmullen, uh, Rathmullen Celtic Football Club. Good morning to you and thank you so very much uh, for joining us. How are you keeping? Very best, Greg. Thanks for having me. No, it's our pleasure. Uh, talk to us about uh, your uh, club and its role within the community. Well, I think any community, the most important thing is sport. I think it's great socially for the children. Um, our club is it's a fantastic club. We have such a great um, team behind us. You know, like Zavanda McElhenney, the heartbeat of our club. Our chairman Cormac, um, and then myself and Mark Kern, we uh, we've we run the academy, and it's just great for the kids. And we're hoping to start again Wednesday week. So mm. you know, from gra grassroots level up to the senior team. It's, uh, in all different um, areas of society, in different groups, the pandemic came in and hit things like a wrecking ball. In terms of what you had going and your revenue streams pre-pandemic, that all just dried up like everything else, I suppose, did it? I certainly did, Greg. But an amazing thing about that was. Um, we would have say sold tickets in the you know the local bars and all, and then as you say the pandemic hit and everything was shut down, so we ran um, a 50-50 draw, and we have diaspora from all over the world, so we have Stephen Riley in Australia buying tickets, Keith McGarvey in Wisconsin. No pressure on them now; they're gonna have to you double know, up this yeah. week. Yeah, <laughs> the Conans in Manchester, yeah. it's amazing. Um, so we're actually. But it gives them an opportunity, not just the ones you name check there, mm -hmm. to. Uh, support home as well and to st keep that connection to support home to support a very good club as i say the grassroots level up to the senior team and um we're actually taking in about two and a half thousand every month mm. i mean that is just un unheard of and so we pay out exactly half of that yeah. money and uh, i think to um dis you know even with the the generosity the going around uh in pubs and stuff selling tickets not a lot of people don't whether people like it or not a lot of people don't carry cash with them and i'm sure it can be quite kind of frustrating if you're doing that because you're trying to say well you, you know this is the future and you kind of were catapulted into the future i suppose 
catapulted into the truly and very draconian as well and it wasn't actually so nice to sell the tickets yeah and now it's just a real stamp in order uh, the amount of people that buy online as i say from all corners of the world uh it's just phenomenal and we, we really appreciate it and you found yourself uh because of the success of this draw you found yourself now in a better position than you have for decades financially financially greg if you look at two and a half thousand we would have probably raised that in six months from the previous book Brilliant. draw and so it's just phenomenal yeah. and that allows you to do what with the money so it allows us to say that in relation to the the rathmullen academy that mark kern runs um you know to get the uh, training facilities you know footballs bibs um jerseys and then also for the senior team you have you've a lot of insurance to pay and uh, it's quite a costly i didn't realize how actually costly it was to yeah. run a, a, yeah. a club yeah. in the donegal league um so it covers all, all those costs, really. Yeah, OK. Um, and uh, how is things going on the pitch? So off the pitch, things are doing good. How are your teams doing uh, on the pitch? Yeah, brilliant. First day back yesterday, the senior boys, Eamon Sheridan uh, and uh, Sheridan and Patrick Patton. Um, you know, they, they got the senior team back yesterday. We had our first game against the mighty fan of United and we had a very entertaining game, a one-all draw. No, not, not quite the nine nils of Celtic and uh, Liverpool, but... Uh, no, but uh, certainly... A good competitive uh, draw, score draw. Of course, absolutely. And I mean, it was a highly entertaining game. And just to see the crowds back, it's, yeah. it's so Where do the see. games get played locally? Is it right close to here? So we're just looking at it there Where? now, just, uh, just opposite the beach. It's probably one of the nicest settings in the country. I think it's that Rathmullen flagpole field is I probably see. one of the nicest settings yeah, in the country. Brilliant. So the teams enjoy coming here. To they get certainly their do. Backsides handed to them, maybe. Well, absolutely. Plus, they get they get a dare in Rathmullen. So yeah, exactly. Very it's win win. Um, where can people find out more about the fifty fifty draw, Morris? So um, we have a, a Facebook page, Rathmullen Celtic, mm -hmm. and also uh, I like to mention a good friend of mine, Paul Dini, Rathmullen Donegal, who does so much for promoting Rathmullen and promotes our football club week in week out. So. Really, Facebook is probably your, your, your best bet to contact us. And this is why little shows like this uh, coming here, um, it opens up your eyes or, or gives you a better understanding of what's going on in little, not not that it's little, but mm -hmm. in different parts of the county. Absolutely. You know, we all have our own, we're all part of the one greater community, but in our own little individual communities, there's so much going on, even within, you know, a relatively small footprint. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, that's a, that's a, exactly, Greg. I mean, it's a, such a beautiful, beautiful town, and there's all these things going on. We have all these different people on speaking earlier. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, football, so as I think sport's a very big part of, of any community. And I'd also like so. to mention the Milford GA, because yeah. a lot of our, our, our kids who uh, train with us in Rathmullen Academy, they, they're very much involved yeah. with... Milford GA and they're a phenomenal and I think we club. realize now there has to be that sort of working together and mutual respect and understanding that's how that's part of the community that how that's how things work best for everyone well absolutely and we're, we're, we're very close they're, they're very good friends of ours Milford GA and um, yeah I mean just for the de development of children I think it's great socially that they're involved and yeah. it's great for their families as well great, great stuff listen Mars it's been lovely to get an insight and to hear success too uh, um, especially with the fundraising because it's such a big part of it and you've, you've hit on something here that's really working uh, and as I said I think it's lovely that the people outside the area who are from here can still support and, and have their fingerprints on the success as well Morris thanks very much indeed thank you very much Craig right, and just to say it's great to have you in Rathmore no it's uh, great yeah it's not our first time but it's great to be here again Pandemic nil, Rathmullen Celtic one. <laughs> okay. Pandemic nil, Rathmullen Celtic nine or something like that. All right. Yeah. Oh. We'll All right. We'll Good man. Thanks very much indeed. That's uh, Morris uh, Kelly there. 086 is the WhatsApp and text line. Uh, I just want to give you a, a quick heads up here, by the way. If you want to go and see Gareth Brooks, uh, head on over to our Instagram page. We have two free tickets uh, to Gareth Brooks for Saturday the 17th of September. Now, to win, all you have to do is follow our Instagram page, Highland Radio Donegal, and tag the person you would take to the concert. And if they're not on Instagram, by the way, just tag anyone, all right? You don't actually have to tag the person that you're bringing because they might not be on Instagram. But anyway, tag something. Give the page a like. Share the post. The lucky winner will be announced on Friday the 2nd of September, the same day. We're giving away 12 and a half grand, uh, 10,000 on this show, 2,500 on Lee Gucci's show. Right, uh, good to have back on the program uh, Angus Kennedy who is principal of the Ruff Mullen Sailing School. So you've a different hat on, uh, Angus. People will be very familiar with your times. Chatting to Olsen, your regular feature with John as well. Where do you squeeze in the time for Rathmullen Sailing School? 
<laughs> I'm not quite sure, Greg. Uh, I'm you haven't quite, quite sure. figured it out yet, have no. you? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're 14 years on the go, and uh, I, I better not look at it too too closely. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so, what uh, is uh, well, well, Tell us about the Rathmullen Sailing School. Yeah. So, uh, the Rathmullen Sailing School was started by um, by some local people. Yeah. Um, and they saw a gap. They saw that there wasn't. Uh, you could do it a bit more tourism. 14 years ago, some kind of little hub, some kind of little bit of an energy spot for it, yeah. uh, and also just to get people on the water in as accessible a way as possible um, because sailing is an expensive sport so to get into sailing can be a difficult thing so the school was started it's under the umbrella of the RDRC much like the football club and, and other things so it's non-profit um, uh, community owned uh, and run by a team of volunteers so does this give people who might not have the resources to get their own gear a pathway into sailing yeah it does exactly yeah so um, uh, so with the boats that we have we run uh, with 13 dinghies and a couple of rescue boats and we run courses during the summertime, um, Irish Sailing Association approved courses. I, and that's to kind of pay the bills because the, the maintenance of these boats and all the rest is expensive enough. But we also run subsidised school programmes. So uh, up until COVID, which slowed us down a little bit, we had seven schools going out in the month of June, all local schools in the local area. And it just gives people an idea, a feel mm. of what it's like to be on the water. Because if you, if you don't go out on boats, if you don't do a couple of sailing lessons, you'll never quite understand. Yeah, but what that's not are doing. unusual. You know that people who live in coastal areas either A, can't swim, or B, don't really use the, the water for leisure. And even those who use it for business often can't swim. We've a, sometimes a, 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 a strange relationship for a coastal community with the sea, don't we? I, uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And the sea was often seen as a dangerous place, a, a place for work, yeah. or a place that you don't go near at all. So it was great vision that the people of Rathmullen saw this. Um, Rick Lavert, Mark and Kelly, James Gallagher and others, they, they saw this and they um, applied for a leader fund and Frank Kelly who was there with leader at the time um, he was great and he helped them get the boats because they're expensive things uh, and get them started off um, and then over the years we've moved around we were in a little shed on the other side of the car park and then we were in a bit of council ground here and now with this great facility building here the council have been very good to us so they lease us the extra section that compound that you see just beside us I here. hope they do it for a very fair uh, rent do they? They do of course good, they do okay, of course they, they look after as well I know they're, they're very good in fairness because that gives us uh, great access 100%. and then with, with the pontoon that, that's going on there as well but we've had um, at this stage we've had uh, five senior instructors and 14 dinghy instructors now these are all professional qualifications that have come up through the ranks they're local people um, who have sailed their way over the few seasons then they've worked as assistant instructors mm -hmm. they volunteer as assistant instructors and then they've got jobs so this year we had uh, young local people working in Manhattan Yacht Club managing a fleet of yachts in Croatia two of them in Greece wow. All from uh, all from learning the sailing here, which is which is a great thing. Yeah. Uh, how this body of water here, the Swilly, how insulated is it from uh, you know weather? I mean, obviously it's an open body of water, but you can have very exposed areas where you'd lose a lot of days in the year. What's this like? Yeah, so it, this summer was actually, even though it was quite cool for July, um, it wasn't too windy. Whereas a lot of the years there'll definitely be one day a week mm. uh, of the courses that you mightn't be able to go sailing, because it is quite exposed. But it makes it a wonderful training ground, yeah. as long as people People know what they're doing and yes. that's why it's important to, to make sure they have their Irish Sailing Association accreditation and their power boating certificates and that kind of thing um, but once they do because between the tides the tides are very very strong here at Mullen Pier um, and uh, and the waters then deep waters and quite exposed and um, if you learn to sail or you learn to boat or learn to kayak in a place like that you've great understanding mm. of the sea you know it is a shared space how does that all work here because you've got people who, who uh, moor the boats you've got the ferry You've the army coming in now and again yeah. on the ship, and then you've got people out there of various skill levels and what have you. So it has to be a lot of mutual respect going on there. Well, well there is, and that's credit to Rathmullen and the community of Rathmullen, it must be said. Because 14 years ago when we started, there wasn't that many people. There was a couple of private boat owners, um, and the pontoon was in. Um, and Angela and the, the pontoon and the angling that they have, the sea angling, they're, they're brilliant. That's a wonderful mm. resource. That really helps. And then between them, the lifeguards, they help us out. They keep an eye on us during the summertime as well um, and then the ferry we have a good relationship with them so the whole thing it brings an le yeah. extra little bit of colour and a bit of action um, which is good but it only works thanks to the cooperation yeah, of, of the town and when you start seeing a body of water that's busy other people want to get involved in that as well it's funny isn't it it can sort of if, if, if there's nothing that if I was looking out there and there was no boys out there and there's no boats out there it would look very 
you know, unhospitable or inhospitable, whatever the word is. But when you see activity, you want a piece of that, don't you? Especially well, in the summertime. Yeah. Completely. And, and boats, boats breed um, uh, boats and, and business breed business, you know, so that, that kind of action. There's a club that has now come out of the school. So the Sound School runs for the few weeks, mm -hmm. does its school program and whatnot. But local people then started a club um, after a year or two. And they, it's, it has to be the best value club in the country. So if you're interested at all, have a little look up. Look up Rathmullen Sailing and Water Sports Club. Mm. We had four local sailors uh, racing in the George Yacht Club um, over the weekend, team racing in the yeah. George Yacht Club. And to be able to go down and hold their own in the fancy places with mm. the fancy blazers and the yeah. rest uh, is great. And they're, and, they're and, easily and, able to hold it. Someone own. was mentioning earlier on there's uh, people from this area that are out competitively fishing on a national, international stage as well. It's amazing what this area is producing, isn't it? And uh, finally, I presume people sort of get the bug. Uh, do you have a lot of uh, former or current uh, sailing school members that then go on and buy, buy their own laser or buy their own um, boat? Loads, yeah. loads. You'll see that compound behind us there. Our boatyard is full and nearly half of the boats that are in there are people's uh, personal boats, okay. which, which, which is wonderful. So they buy those do their courses and then they go out you'll see them on Wednesdays and Sunday mornings in particular and they keep going right up until it gets very cold Excellent, and, and that's the that's the club keeping them going yeah, it's, it's super stuff thing. Angus nice to hear about uh, a different string to your bow great yeah, to have thanks. you in alright thank you very much, much indeed Angus Kennedy there and that is it that's our last guest or Angus is our last guest it's been a lovely morning here at uh, Rathmullen we've had a, a great mix of uh, talking to people from within the community it's great to have Katie in Carol was uh, amazing as well uh, her um, a live performance and um, it's just been really lovely to be out here on a beautiful day. Thank you very much to uh, Seamus who got us here Caroline who produced and, and Kevin who uh, kept us on air technically and Donald as well back at base and uh, Donna Marie also uh, working the lines back there as well. We'll be back uh, tomorrow morning back in studio from 9 o'clock. Stay tuned John Bredson's up around the northwest. but for me Greg Hughes and all the team and everyone here in Rathmullen enjoy the rest of your Monday. Is your current car ready for a change? If so, now is a good time to visit DMG Motors Donegal Town as we have a great selection of quality approved Skodas and Seat used cars which are fully serviced, fully prepped and ready to go. With finance available and cars to suit all budgets, let us help you upgrade your car today. For more